Order. Uh, welcome to the Thursday, February 11th, 2021 electronic meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic District Commission. The meeting is being held electronically to protect public health and safety due to COVID-19 virus and to comply with orders issued by the governor, from the Michigan Department of Health and the Human Services and the Washtenaw County Health Department. We intend to conduct this meeting similarly to an in-person meeting. However, please be patient if there are technical issues. Public comment will be via telephone only. To speak during any of the public comment opportunities, please call 877-853-5247, that's toll free, or 213-338-8477, and enter meeting ID pound 978-6401-4515. This information is also available on the published agenda in the public notices section of the city website. And on the broadcast of this meeting is on CTN channel 16, AT&T channel 99, and online at www.a2gov.org backslash watch CTN. We'll now move to a new agenda item B, roll call. Ms. Thatcher, would you please call roll? Commissioner Rockland. Here. Commissioner Beeson. Here. Commissioner Epperson. Here. Commissioner Fortner. Here. Commissioner Quijano. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Hall. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, now we'll move on to agenda item C, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda? Yes, I would like to remove item F5 and item F8 from the agenda. Those petitions have been withdrawn, so we do okay. not have all the public hearings. So we will remove those items from the agenda. Uh, as amended, does that sound right? I don't mm -hmm. have a script for that, so I- uh, That's correct, without objections. Without objection. Any objections? Seeing none, we will approve the agenda as amended. We'll now move on to agenda item D, public comment. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about an issue that is not listed as a public hearing on this agenda. To comment on such other preservation matters, please call 877-853-5247 or 213-338-8477 and enter meeting ID pound 978-6401-4515. This information is also displayed on the meeting agenda and video feed. City staff will select callers that have, quote, raised their hand one by one using the last three digits of your phone number. In order to electronically raise your hand, your, uh, to indicate your desire to speak, please press star nine on your phone. You will hear an automated announcement that the host is allowing you to speak. When speaking, please move to a quiet area and mute any television or background sounds so that we may hear you clearly. Please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. We'll now move on to agenda item E, unfinished business. There is no unfinished business, so that'll put us at the hearings. First hearing is F1 uh, at 113 South 4th Avenue. Ms. Thatcher, will you please give the staff report? Sure. It's not the screen I wanted to share. Hang on. Sorry for all these technical difficulties tonight, folks. This has not happened yet. It's just doing it to mark the one year anniversary of our virtual <laughs> meetings. All mm -hmm. right. What are you seeing right now? Are you seeing? South 4th Avenue? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, there, we are. there it is. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. All 
All right. 113 South 4th Avenue is in the Main Street Historic District. There was a saloon at this location from the time the first courthouse was built in the 1930s, 1830s until Prohibition. John Heinrich acquired the property in the late 1860s and replaced the wooden saloon with the brick building at 111. That's the one that you see at the left. Despite its similarity in design and appearance, the building at 113 South 4th on the right, which began life as a blacksmith and wagon shop, was not built until circa 1890. The third floor was added in the mid 20th century. These two buildings were the vanguards of the preservation and downtown living movements in the 1970s when Estelle Schneider and Bonnie DeLuf created residential units above the commercial space and pioneered loft living in Ann Arbor. The applicant is seeking HTC approval to modify the existing non-original storefront window by pulling a section forward four feet to enclose a currently exposed light well, installing a new stone sill and replacing two solid core doors with the same. Um, this is that excellent building. Um, in a moment, you'll see what it looked like in the 70s, but basically nothing below this line uh, is original with maybe the exception of these bricks on the sides. Um, and probably actually not even them now that I look at it closely. Right now in the front, there's a light well, uh, not original to the building. They're actually, it's in two parts. The proposal is to take this storefront piece of glass and fill it into this brick space closer to where a traditional storefront would be. This is the other little bit of light well that would, this one would just be capped over and bricked to match these other bricks um, that are used uh, as an entry. The two doors that would be replaced are these two non-original slab doors. They'd be replaced with the same. Another view of those light wells. So the glass plane would be brought out to, to this edge um, between the, this pillar and this, this wall over here. The, the, the cool ladder isn't really historic since this property didn't used to have a light well, but it would be left there. Uh, nonetheless, because it's cool. And this is what the building looked like before 1975. That's your proof that everything that's going on there today um, is, is modern work. Right now, the basement has this light well in the front, um, and then there's a sliding glass door to get into it. And um, that would just be removed and it would be used as finished space because it would be closed in on the, on the top um, and not open to the elements. On the first floor, the existing storefront runs straight across here, um, punctuated only by the doors. Uh, the light well would now, I'm sorry, the, the storefront would now be moved out to between these two pillars, jog in, and then make its way the rest of the way across. Some of these bits aren't being replaced, um, though this door and frame are. Existing on the left, proposed on the right, pretty straightforward. Uh, it might look a little more traditional when it's got glass close up to the front um, at the street. There are some section drawings, um, if you wanna look at those to help you understand it. Secretary of, Interior in, of the Interior Standards, um, Number two says that the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved. The removal of distinctive materials or alteration of features, spaces, and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided. And number nine, um, I've got the wrong slide up here. It says new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new works shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. Uh, from the Secretary of Interior's guidelines for rehabilitation, uh, the, the guidelines for designing missing storefronts say, say that you should design a new storefront when the historic storefront is completely missing, maybe an accurate restoration, or it may be a new design that's compatible with the size, scale, and material of the historic building. Not recommended is introducing a new design that's incompatible. Uh, from the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for storefronts, it's not appropriate to install a new storefront that's incompatible in size and material with the historic building and district. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Since we don't know the original appearance of the storefront, there's nothing to try to emulate or recreate. Um, there is a new stone sill proposed. Right now it's a brick sill. I'm not sure if I have a picture of that or not, but uh, yeah, uh, no. Yeah, there, it's just brick, proposed to be replaced with stone. 
Staff believes that pulling the glass out of the face of the building is an improvement over the current recessed storefront, simple and compatible in design, size, scale, and material with the historic resources nearby. And staff believes that it is appropriate uh, and meets the Secretary of Interior standards and guidelines and the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines. That's it. Thank you. Well, let's see. Commissioners Beeson and Quijano were on the review committee. Uh, will you please give us your report and recommendation? Sure. Who wants to go? Well, I. You go. I'll be short and sweet. Uh, I. It was a very thorough and clear application, and the staff's report was quite thorough. I. I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, I mean. It, the, the glass is, it was confirmed that the new plane of storefront will be uh, set to the backside of the existing brick columns, that surface. So um, that would be maintained, that depth of front brick wall. Um, yeah, I, I don't have much to add. All right, and I'll add that, uh the fencing that's there was it is old but it was not original and it was salvaged from somewhere else uh, based on what the owner described to us or the tenant um and that will be removed and not come back but you know it's a it's not a historic piece of the project anyway um i uh, i do have a question for the uh, owner and jill you might be able to answer this too as to whether or not the we know that the plane of the glazing is moving out, but is does that mean the whole thermal space is now connected, like the glazing on the interior is being removed, and so that the space is one continuous airspace? Yes, yes, it will be. But Dick can talk to that when we get to the owner. Okay. Yeah, and I think on site we had some questions about the brick and the brick paver stuff, and being able to get something for that infill that'll that'll work out pretty well. You know. Again, a non-original storefront, there's really not much else to say on this. Okay, uh, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. Um, I think you can see me, it's, it's Richard Mitchell. Yeah. And um, 1113 West Liberty in Ann Arbor. Um, and I'm, I'm sensing you can all hear me. Um, good, good. I mean, seeing a thumbs up. The only things I would add, yes, to Mr. Beeson's question, the the condition space now moves to the inside face of the new glass, so the existing storefront goes away, and we'll have a glass <clears throat> ruling that separates that light well, so people don't fall. Um, and the only thing I would add to um, Jill's presentation was the mention that the brick sill was going to be replaced by stone. Actually, the brick still stays, and we're just putting a two inch stone sill on top of it. Small detail, but that's, and other than that, everything, I don't have much to add. Okay, do we have. Uh... Any commissioners with other questions for the applicant? Commissioner Epperson. Um, yeah, I just had one question to I guess, follow up on the sill. The um, piece of storefront that returns back to the building, um, that's a new piece, will that terminate directly on the brick paving? Or is there a new um, sort of I guess wall that would be going underneath that or another little curb? There, yes, yeah, good good question. There there will be a curb matching the height of the other one that will be stone. Okay. So the front and the side will be the same height. Okay. So it will um the stone it will all wrap around the same side. Does that mean there'll be a little bit of a brick curb that gets built up or underneath? It, it'll be one front. course of brick and then a, a two inch stone sill. Okay. Match the one in the front. Okay. Any other commissioners with questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll now move to the public hearing uh, portion of this uh, agenda item. 
Uh, this is an opportunity for a person to speak for up to three minutes about the application at 113 South 4th Avenue. Uh, Kristen, do we have any callers to this application? There are a few callers. None of them have pressed star nine to raise their hand, um, but we'll give it just a moment. Just in case. Okay, so maybe I'll just review. Uh, I had read that at the beginning, but I'll read it one more time just in case any of these callers have just joined us. Uh, you can, you press star nine on your phone if you're a caller and would like to speak on this agenda. We'll wait a second here. Do we have any anyone raising their hand? No, no callers have indicated. Okay, and we'll uh, move on again. Any commissioners with questions? Seeing none, we'll now close the public hearing portion of this application. Is there a commissioner that would like to make a motion on this application? Commissioner Quijano, thank you. Sure. Okay, uh, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 113 South 4th Avenue, a contributing property in the Main Street Historic District, to modify the existing non-original storefront windows, install a new stone sill, and replace two solid corridors with the same as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for storefronts and windows and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards one, two, and nine, and the guidelines for storefronts and building site. Support. Okay, so that was moved by Commissioner Quijano, and then there was support from Commissioner White. Uh, let's see, is there any discussion on the motion? Commissioner Rockland, thank you. Um, I'll just echo that um, I think that this also meets the, the standards that we have here and, and also just the comment about this being a very thorough uh, and easily understandable application. I will, uh, I will add one to that comment as well. So thank you. Great, thank you, Commissioner uh, Rockland. Any other commissioners with anything to add? Okay, seeing none, I would also add that uh, it's refreshing when there's such a thorough application, easy to understand, so thank you. Um, let's move to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Your motion carries, your application has been approved and you'll receive written notice from staff Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Great, we'll move on to hearing F2. Uh, this is at 100 South Main Street. Ms. Thatcher, will you please give the staff report? Okay. Uh, 100 South Main Street is also in the Main Street Historic District. This seven-story Beaux-Arts commercial building features an elaborate entablature, stone escutcheons, coins and window trim and fluted columns. Uh, the ornate cornice was recently restored, and this contributing building in the Main Street Historic District is known as the Glazier Building. It was built in 1906 and was originally occupied by the First National Bank of Ann Arbor. A three-story addition was added to the southern elevation in 1908 and was first occupied by the W. Goodyear and Company dry goods store. Um, I didn't attach it here, but this building has a pretty interesting history about when it was built. There was lots of scandal surrounding it. So you may want to look it up in, uh, in Susan Weinberg and Patrick McCauley's book sometime. Uh, in 2012, the HCC approved applications for a new storefront and sign on the three-story addition. That's the part that you see there at the left. And in 2007, they approved the replacement of non-original Huron Street doors and stairs and building lighting. And uh, at around this time, a canopy over the Huron Street entry was also approved by the HTC. It's at the southwest corner of West Huron Street and South Main Street, and the applicant is seeking HTC approval to replace two ground floor windows on the North Huron Street elevation with new windows that include louvers for fresh air intake and exhaust. Second, to replace the East or Main Street entrance doors to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And third, to install three wall signs, one each on the East and North elevations near the Northeast corner of the building, 
and one on the west elevation near the top of the seven story elevator tower. Okay. Um, front of the building, uh, most recent tenant was um, uh, a, a, a different bank, key bank. They used to have a sign, I think you'll see it in one of the photos, that covered up all of this cool stone carved banding here. Um, and it's great that that sign is gone and you can see that again. Here's a picture, an undated postcard. There's a horse down here, which tells me that it's 1920s or earlier. <laughs> um, but this is a picture of the building. You used to enter when it was Goodyear, shortly after it was built, through the addition. There were no doors anywhere on the storefront, and this looks like it was a bay window. Um, so, and, and obviously when you see them, you'll see that the doors in the front are non-original to the building. And then there was another um, entrance over here. These are the non-original front doors that they'd like to replace um, to, I believe it's something that having to do with a kick plate needing to be higher to meet, meet code and also to remove this mail chute glazing here and just replace it with new glazing without a mail chute. That would just be a staff approval, but since they were coming in for other stuff, they rolled it into this application. On the north elevation, there are two windows, this one and this one. They're obviously not original windows, um, consistently down the side of the window are these metal bands at the tops of the windows. These are windows that would be replaced and a portion of the upper 12 inches of the windows uh, re replaced with louvers and then new windows that match these existing ones below. Same color, same um, glazing configuration. And finally, this is the modern stair or elevator tower on the back and it's at the top here that there used to be a sign, there used to be a key bank sign and um, Chase Bank would like to replace it with their logo. So here's some drawings of what this would look like. The doors are almost the same. They're just a little bit different at the bottom. Um, these existing front windows remain the same. And here's where the Chase Bank sign is going, which I think is a great place for it. It's on that metal band above the window where it's already um, modern materials and uh, won't harm anything historic and won't obscure anything historic. Uh, I think that these, this and this on the, the north side, these chase signs are a big improvement uh, in that respect over their predecessors. Then if you look uh, on the north side at those, these are the two windows that I just showed you pictures of. This shows where the louvers would go across the top. The, the other alternative for getting fresh air in an, an old air out of this building would be to run some sort of exhaust pipe up through the three-story addition and vent it out the roof of that, um, which isn't very convenient when you're cutting through three floors uh, from the interior. And really, this is on a front, it's very visible. Um, but given that you already have these dark metal bands here, uh, I think adding another 12 inches of louvers on non original windows uh, in original openings is uh, a, a very acceptable and unobtrusive way to accomplish this. Here's what it looks like now with those two bands. Here's what it would look like with the louvers. They match, they're the same color. They're just, it's gonna just look like a little bit thicker bands, which really when you get into this canopy anyway, which is which is a heavier um, band than, than the ones that exist right now, um, I really don't find that that looks unbalanced at all. And you can see the little new signs here, here and, uh, this is the key bank sign that came down that used to be over the stonework there. Uh, there's a better picture of it. So, well, I think that these signs are the perfect sign and design. There is a problem with them, and that is that they are internally illuminated. So, I am um, sorry, the dog's butt to bark. I am recommending um, that these signs not be approved because they are all internally illuminated. And I'll show you the, the third one in a minute. Um, the, I've, I, I, I had warned the applicants of this beforehand. They got proposed somehow anyway, and I, I think that they understand now that, that um, that's not allowed by the Ann Arbor Design Guidelines. And so what I've done is write the, the motion such that the part for the windows um, only talks about the size and placement of the sign, not illumination of it. It's it just, it, it actually, it basically conditions it that these not be internally illuminated. That way, if they figure out a way to externally illuminate them, they can go ahead and do that um, with just a staff approval. 
or um, if they want to come back with halo lighting, that could be a separate new application to you guys, unless you think that that would be an appropriate treatment. Um, there's lots of details, good details on the signs. Um, let's see. They are all for internally illuminated signs, unfortunately, but uh, I think that there would be a pretty easy way to do this with halo lights or possibly with external lights shining down from the top, which is what our new sign code requires. No more illumination from beneath shining up. Um, yeah, and there's the there's the logo sign. It's 60 inches across, but goodness, it's eight stories up. So it, I, I really don't think that that's an inappropriate size. Um, to be seen casually from a distance without drawing too much attention to itself. All right, so getting into the Secretary of Interior standards, number one says that a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. Number two, I've read to you already, I believe, Number nine says that new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials. The new work should be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing size scale and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. Number 10 says that new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. From the guidelines for building site, it's not recommended to remove or radically change buildings and their features, which are important in defining the overall historic character of the building, so that as a result, the character is diminished. For storefronts, it's recommended to design and construct um, a new storefront when the historic storefront is completely missing, or you know, it may be an accurate restoration, or it may be a new design that's compatible with the size, scale, and material of the historic building. I should mention that both the proposed new doors and the new windows are bronze color that exactly match what's there right now. From the guidelines for storefronts, it's not recommended to use inappropriately scaled signs and logos or other types of signs or using new illuminated signs. Um, from the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for Windows, um, if a window is completely missing, it's appropriate to replace it with a new window based on accurate documentation of the original or a new design compatible with the original opening and the historic character of the building. For commercial entries, it's appropriate to replace missing original doors with a design that matches the originals or with a compatible new design that fits the style and period of the building and the existing opening. And from the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for Signs, it's appropriate to attach signage through masonry joints or through materials that can be easily repaired, such as wood, when the signage is removed. And these um, would be uh, mounted, I believe it said, uh, it did specify through mortar joints for the sign on the tower, um, and the others would be through uh, the metal bands that are part of the window design. All right, let me go back up here a sec. Um, so I've already uh, explained staff's uh, condition that is suggested in the motion, should you use, decide to use that motion. Um, uh, and I do believe that the, the door is completely appropriate, meets all the standards and guidelines, and that as conditioned, the signs are all right, uh, just without the internal illumination. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, Commissioners Beeson and Kihana were on the review committee. Please give us uh, your uh, report and recommendation. Anna, would you like to? You want me to start? Sure. Sure. So, um, Cool building. Uh, it's got uh, some cool features to it. So the application is is really just looking at a lot of non-standard storefront um, and trying to replace it uh, with new stuff. The only areas that are kind of like the questionable stuff that we haven't seen before is is doing the louvers on on a pretty prominent facade. Um, I don't know, Jill, if you could bring that back up. And while the louvers are going to be pretty narrow in scope and um, again, non-original storefront all the way around. Uh, it is something different to look on the front of this building. Um, and, you know, how much of that character is being changed as a result of that is, is, is probably an area of discussion for ourselves, but uh, you know, by and large, um, it's a pretty straightforward application and the signage works really well within the banding. So 
Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, it's um, again another very to the point application here, um, working with non historic material that's being uh, intervened and um, not, not much more to add to that in terms yeah. of observations. So I guess I have one other observation then. So hold on. So I guess the <laughs> last part is the, the signage. We're trying to look at comparable signage in the area. Um, and Ms. Thatcher was quick to point out that uh, many of these signage examples within the area don't actually fall within the historic district. Um, you know, so while we might see a lot of bank signs in the area, they were like, oh yeah, sure. Um, the, the ones that are concerning to us are certainly to this building and how it meets our Secretary of Interior standards. Great, thanks to uh, Commissioners Quijano and, and Beeson. Uh, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. This is Jennifer Carr, um, 1111 Polaris Parkway, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I'm the signage manager for the bank. No, it's um, <laughs> And it looks like we have a few other, maybe uh, Dave and Kelly. Is that right? Uh, sorry, Dave, you might be on mute. I'm not hearing you, Dave. Hmm. Hi, I, my camera's not working right, but can you hear me? Yeah, I can, Kelly, yes. Okay. So uh, my name is Kelly Campbell. I'm the property manager I, for Dahlman property. So I represent the building owner. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Dave still having some. He's going to call in. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so we'll just uh, maybe start with Jennifer. Do we have anything to add to the review committee report or the staff report? Um, my only comment was on the illumination with the letters um we're we're happy with the placement of it we worked with kelly on um where they would like the the letters on the building they didn't want us to cover up where the key bank sign was so we were conscientious to the architecture of the building um i would like to see if softer illumination edge lit or halo lit illumination would be allowed um, we were under the impression that it was going to be illuminated um, signage that we typically have so i didn't know if we did come back if it would be acceptable to show some sort of a softer look before um, without trying to do an exterior an external illumination on the sign because we're on that window and I don't want to add gooseneck lighting to it. So I just was wondering if it would be acceptable to come back with something showing a softer illumination. Okay. Uh, do we have any other, Dave, do we have? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thanks. All right. Great. So uh, sorry about that. I'm not quite sure why my speaker, my why my microphone wasn't picking up, but no uh, my, my name is Dave Stengel. I'm with the Architects Partnership. So I'm here to just answer any questions regarding the, the louver components. Great. Thanks, Dave. Uh, let's see, do any of the commissioners have questions for the applicant? Commissioner Rockland, please. Hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I guess there's a question for Dave. Um, can you explain like what type of uh, like, I guess I, I want to get a feel for how much air is going to be blowing out of the vents. Um, just uh, it is on the sidewalk there. I realize it's quite high up. Um, but can you just let us know, uh, you know, maybe a CFM or just small, medium, large in terms of airflow uh, for the vents? 
Sure, absolutely. I don't have the CFMs. I would have to check with my mechanical engineer on that. Mm -hmm. But basically, the, the two louvers, one is for fresh air intake because the existing space currently has zero fresh air intake. Also, the existing space does, has zero exhaust. So the exhaust is specifically just for like the, the toilet rooms in the basement. So it would be very minimal. Got it. So, so we shouldn't think like, you know, a lot of times like a rooftop air handler unit, those things can be quite loud and move a lot of air, but this is not that this is just for ventilation and the airflow correct. would be more on the low side. Okay. Thank you. That is correct. It would be very, very minimal. Um, the the exhaust in the toilet rooms are based on occupancy sensors as well, so okay. they they are not going off um, 24/7. Thanks for that. We did um, we did take a look to see if we could put the louvers in that in that dark anodized um, header above the windows, but unfortunately they're still inside those headers. So um, unfortunately that that. Um, negated that option. Thank you. Uh, any other commissioners with questions? I'm not seeing any. So what we'll do next is uh, open up the public hearing. Go ahead. Item. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. This is an opportunity for uh, persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application at 100 South Main Street. Kristen, do we have uh, any callers for this application? No callers have indicated. Okay, no callers. And commissioners, any additional questions? Seeing none, I'll now close the public hearing portion of this application. Uh, is there any commissioners that would like to make a motion on this application? Commissioner Fortner, please. Mute. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 100 South Main Street, a contributing property in the Main Street Historic District to replace two ground floor windows on the north Huron Street elevation with new windows that include louvers for fresh air intake and exhaust and replace the east Main mm -hmm. Street doors as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design arrangement, texture material and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs and the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, 9 and 10 and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Signs. I move that the Commission issue a Certificate of Appropriateness for the application at 100 South Main Street, a contributing property in the Main Street Historic District, to install three wall signs on the condition that the signs are not internally illuminated. The work is conditioned, is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area, and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs and Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. That was moved by Commissioner uh, Fortner and supported by Commissioner White. So is there any discussion on the motion? Is that, are we talking, which motion are we going to yeah. talk about, oh, Evan? Sorry. To talk about both of them, or should we do them one at a time? Maybe we should do them one at a time. Would that make more sense? Yes. Commissioners, okay. So we will start, uh, which one should we start with? Start with? Where are the windows? The windows. We'll start with the windows. Any discussion? on the windows. I'm not, Commissioner Beeson. Great, yeah, I would say, you know, by and large, this, this follows our historic district guide, design guidelines for storefronts and, and for windows. It follows the Secretary of Interior standards. So I say, you know, on the window side of things, especially if it's non-original, um, it's, 
it seems okay. I, I, okay, Commissioner Rockland. Um, I would agree with that. And I think especially for the, you know, what's going on in the, the front door there with the replacement um, is, is uh, there's no, you know, really no question at all about that. And I guess like uh, Commissioner Beeson already said, it, it's really a question of the louvers. And um, I think that the team here, the design team and, and the, you know, the, the, the owner and, and the, the tenant here all came together and, and came up with a really, uh, a very compatible way of providing this, you know, mechanical necessity uh, into this historic building without you know, removing any uh, character defining features or, and making it very compatible. So I, I feel like um, this, this part certainly does uh, meet our standards. Yeah, I would agree completely with what you both have said. And it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good way to achieve what they needed to achieve with the, the uh, ventilation. Absolutely. So maybe we'll move to vote uh, on the windows. Sound okay with everyone, unless anyone else has anything to add? I'm not seeing any. So we will now move to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those, please say no. The motion carries. Your application has been approved. Uh, you receive written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning work on your project. So now we're going to pop back up and go to a uh, discussion on the signs. That makes sense to everybody? Okay. Who, uh, any comments or discussion on the signs? Commissioner Rockland. I had a question if I could begin with that. And um, I guess a clarification for Jennifer. Mm -hmm. um, could you please clarify what your comment was earlier about like softer illumination? Were you talking about uh, softer internal illumination or were you talking about some other type of illumination? So we're, we've been tossing around an idea of, of an edge lit type of illumination around the signs and it's a softer glow there versus a down light um, or a gooseneck light that would shine, you know, right on the letters. Um, and this gives just a softer, more elegant look to the letters. And I'd like to bring that um, back to show the committee to see if it would be acceptable. And I, I get, I'm a little concerned about our octagon not having um, illumination either. So I would propose um, a softer illumination around the octagon as well was my thought before I went down the path of an um, external light. Jennifer, do you mean halo lighting when you say? Well, we could, we, we, I mean, it's called halo. It could be halo. We could do a halo illumination, but my um, sign manufacturer is um, um, proposing an edge lit. We've done it um, elsewhere across the country and it gives a nice, um, gives a nice effect to the sign. So I, was like playing I was playing around with ideas once I found out that we had to do non-illuminated or no um, internally illuminated letters. That would be a new one to me and maybe to some of you other commissioners as well. Uh, I'm not sure what edge lighting looks like, so we probably have to see that. Okay. Yeah, and I think that would be, I don't want to get ahead of things here, but the way you've described it seems like a potentially appropriate way of illuminating as opposed to the gooseneck type lights, yeah. which we are not in favor of. Um, okay. So. I, I wasn't sure how I was going to do externally illuminated on that on this build on this type of building so that's why we were um, playing around with the the um the edge lit lighting so okay and jill can you bring up uh, the images again of the location of the signs and i would argue that the sign on the that one <laughs> 
also has a little bit of a different treatment just because it's on this uh, go back to the stair tower the brick stair tower mm -hmm. yeah just because that, that you know that brick stair tower stands out like a sore thumb away from the historic structure um so part of me is a little more flexible on what that sign is up there only because it is entirely different from the historic portion and though a pl sign placement there would certainly detract from the historic nature uh, of the building the sign up there would also hide some of that big stare so I, I have different feelings about how to handle the signage up at the top of the stair versus signage that's in the band and then go to the band areas and so so for the band areas i'm kind of trying to think about like where you've got the cursor like at night what that would look like and if you had it kind of this you're describing it as edge lit or is that almost like backlit in the same way um, treat. Well, I have Tracy. She's a, my sign um, vendor is on the call. Yeah, she's saying yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, and yes, and the fact that it's like it it is backlit, edge lit, and backlit are fairly similar. Similar, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it it depends on the back light and where the source of the light is. Like if it's if it's being lit from behind, or if the like here's the here's the back of the lettering. Like if it's being lit towards the building or if it's mounted on the building lighting from the back right and that i would think we would probably treat those very differently as well okay okay uh commissioner rockman yeah i guess just not really knowing exactly what this edge lit looks like but just thinking about uh Ms. Thatcher's comment earlier about how our new sign ordinance doesn't allow pointing up lights for dark skies. Does the, you know, if the edge, if it's, if you're talking about lighting around the edge and the lighting is actually pointing out of the edge, it's possible that at all the tops of the letters, those would be pointing up and might not be allowable, not necessarily by the historic district, but it sounds like possibly by the sign ordinance because if you have leds pointing up that aren't um well they would have to be i think shielded if they're pointing up or maybe you can't even have pointing up at all i'm not i'm not sure or maybe it, that's just not right at all because i don't really know the sign ordinance i'm just <laughs> reading into what jill is saying okay it it would it would kind of illuminate around the letters it wouldn't be um pointing up it would be a soft glow so we can bring it back to um to show and we could have the details um thank you mm -hmm. they, they would probably be, be pointing forward and the light would softly go up right like it's not like they'd be pointed up they're not pointing up no it wouldn't it wouldn't um be that strong of a light so the uh, bill the way that it's written now we can vote on this because we don't know what this really looks like so we can approve the signs and then the staff could approve whatever the edge lit looks like, or is that? It, it would have to come back to the HTC for the edge lighting. I can, okay. I um, unless you want to word it that um, I can take a look at it as staff and you know make a game day call about whether it needs to come back to the commission or not. That's up to you guys. But traditionally, you've approved all of the halo lit signs. Okay. Any commissioners want to weigh in on how they feel about that? Like how we want to handle this? Not seeing any. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, if it's, you know, if it's not, if it's not the halo sign, if it's a new type of illuminated signage, do we, do we want to see it so that we know what this, I would looks think so. Like in case we, you know, get more applications of that type of lighting. Well, I don't think we should just or, approve I, it like saying, oh, it's going to be like a halo. But like, do we okay with staff approving it or do we want to see it again and postpone this essentially? I think staff can approve it. She knows, she knows well, uh, the regulation. Okay, Commissioner White is saying, staff approval any other commissioners have thoughts or feelings on this 
I prefer, I prefer that you not postpone it, guys. That but I the way it. that the motion was read, I don't think we would need to postpone, correct? No, you wouldn't need to postpone. It's 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 read as the signs are fine as long as they're not internally illuminated. Right. So they would need to come back with a new application for an edge lit or a halo lit sign. I was um, just trying to save them the money. I right it wouldn't have a new application. Chase, I guess. That's, that's kind of you, Evan. <laughs> and the time. Right. And the time, exactly. Well, the time's the same because they could still get it on oh, the response if they're if they're if they're quick. <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing strong opinions here. I'd recommend um, since it's a kind of sign that you've possibly not seen before, I'd recommend that the commission take a look at it. Yep. Okay. I'm fine with that. Not trying so to that, drag it out, but so that means we would we could vote on what's here. And if they want to do that, they can do that. If they want to do something different, they're going to have to bring it back. Is that correct? Well, we can defer that and just defer it to next month, and they can show us. And that way, if we like it, we'll, we can accept it. Well, that's what I was proposing. I, I postpone, isn't that postponing it, or is that deferring? Is that different? It's the same. You can, And you can do that if you guys want to. It's up to you. I prefer I prefer not to say no until we see it or yes until we see it. If we're going to do it, if the commission is going to uh, stamp it. But the way the motion currently reads is that the signs are not lit, so we could approve that, and they would have to come back. We either have to deny the motion or amend the motion to include the lighting, correct, and the postponement if it's going to be correct. reviewed in that way. Correct. Well, we can amend it. I'm for amending the motion. And they can come back and show us if they met our standard. So, so then you should just move to postpone <laughs> the signage portion of the application to the March 11, 2021 HDC meeting. Okay. Is does the applicant have any problem with that or I mean No, I no, I feel like you are we're not going to move the letters in any way. They're going to stay where they're at. We're just going to come back showing you the illumination. So I'm confident that the placement of our letters besides would all get approved. There's no risk in, in losing those. So I'm comfortable coming back showing the illumination. Okay. Great. Okay. So then I would so well, we have some Evan, go ahead. Hold on. I mean before we get out of this though, we should probably have a discussion about exactly what Jennifer just brought up, just to make sure that everyone actually is okay yeah. with the sizes mm -hmm. now while we're all here. And maybe there is an issue that we can bring up if there is. But if there isn't, then Jennifer can feel comfortable <laughs> to say. Thank you for, for saying that, Commissioner Rockman. Well put. Uh, do we have any discussion on the signage portion of this application? In the size to me, it's, it's fine. I, I, I have a question about it, if that's OK. Great. Should I move forward? OK. Um, the, the um the size from the drawings looks as if it's uh taller than the band and i don't even want to call it a sign band because i don't really think that is a sign band so i just am curious about um like the letters just from the drawings that i think they're 16 inches i don't know how big the sign band is the logo itself is 21 inches um and i guess the only consideration is is that obscuring historic materials it's obviously way better than the previous sign so that is like really appreciated i just want to make sure that we're not still obscuring um historic materials and and can it get smaller or does it need to get smaller or is it fine i, I guess if it's maybe offset a bit you know we're seeing it in elevation so it all looks kind of smushed um, is it okay that it sort of goes above and below 
I guess above is really the only issue because right. below is not historic. So does anyone have any comments about that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So Jill, can you go to, oh, it's page 14 of the packet. There we go. So we could definitely see that the letters are gonna be above, uh, a little bit above and below. So the area that I'm worried about mostly is that middle channel, right? And we can see that that middle channel, the, the brackets that are kind of holding the each of the letters, that's really narrow. And that pretty much will blend, in my mind, it looks like it'll blend in right at the sign quote band, <laughs> sign band, mm -hmm. um, and will be kind of narrower than the actual uh, width of where they're mounting it. So all I do is see these, these letters that are kind of uh, floating above it. And while they're, yeah, they're in front and almost obscuring a little bit, they're also at the same time floating away. So they're not really blocking <laughs> it all that much to me. Like, I, I feel like, Sure, in an elevation, we'd see it as obscure, but uh, in, in a 3D life where you're moving around it, you'd, you'd be able to see through these lettering. Well, would the attachment and section details be the same as what we're looking at right now with the newly Lighting. proposed lights? So That's I guess, question. and would, you know, we don't have the details of it, so we can't answer that. So I'd, I'm, I, I hear your point for these lights, but not knowing the details for the other lights, yep. it could be. Yeah, and the way that the lighting is being described, I kind of see it as oh, like the lights are, well, that, I don't know how it's any different than Halo, but it would be the, like the edge where they would just light the LED around the, the lettering facing the building, but it would be on the back of each of the letters. Right. That's why I'm envisioning this edge lettering, this edge lighting, but I don't really know. So uh, that's how I'm envisioning it. Jennifer, any comment there or response? Um, he's spot on. He he's he's envisioning it correctly, and we would come back with you know the same details of um, engineering drawings that we're showing in the package now, showing all those details. But in relationship to the letters are 16 inches the band is 13 inches so we are kind of floating um along that that the fascia a little bit and then our octagon is typically bitter, bigger than our letters so our octagon is three inches so it's a one and a half inches taller three inches taller than our letters so the octagon is slightly larger than our letter set on the right side and then the letter or the lighting would probably be like a thin LED, like not more than like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, or is it bigger than that? Um, so sh we're, they Checking. would be, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, she's feeding me information. I'll just be honest. So the edge lit would be three quarters inches from the one and a half inch letter return. One and a half inch letter return. All right there. Okay, yeah, so it's not much. I mean, yeah, to me, yeah. these letters are really just kind of floating off. Um, we would definitely see this as kind of an odd moving 3D object and not a kind of a static thing. Even, even standing on the sidewalk across the street or even standing at the sidewalk right underneath them, they wouldn't really obscure the band very much in my mind at all. No. And you would maintain a similar step out. That is not, what was it, five or six inches? I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, it's five inches, it looks like. Five inches there. Mm -hmm. We assume that that would stay similar. Well, it might be a little less because it would be a little less, lettering. maybe, but it's still, yeah. it's not going to be lighting. Dramatic. Yeah, it would be just the the thickness of the lighting. Yeah. Okay. Any other commissioners with discussion items on the sign? Mr. Rockland. So then, for the uh, the large octagon. Um, that one looks like it's flush. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's just, it's different. It's mounted differently. It looks like it's on a four inch something. So maybe, oh, I don't know if the edge lit is gonna work in the same way. Anyway, so um, any comments about edge lighting? I, I, I guess, well, actually, before I get to that, I think the size of this is fine. I think it will, will uh, yeah, kind of fill that, um, that kind of 
finger, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, ear of the tower. Um, you know, in that elevation nicely, it's big, obviously, but um, like, um, like Jill said, it's quite high up there. Uh, it doesn't seem too big to me. Um, and like Commissioner Beeson said, it's, it's clearly offset from the historic building again. Um, but I guess in terms of, of lighting on, on that is, is Jennifer, do you think the proposal for that would be edge lit as well or? Um, I think that one, if, if you were to prove it face lit, we could keep it face lit, but if, um, but we could make it a halo illumination on that type of sign and that would give it a softer um, glow as well. And I'm not sure we can do that with the way that the guidelines are written. Okay. Um, yeah, we just can't do any internally lit. Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a game changer on that one. Um, okay. In terms of the how it's lit though and its size, I think that's really what I was really speaking to is that I have much more flexibility on it. But in terms of the internal, you know, as I said, it can't okay. be internally lit. But you could still like okay. stand it off maybe and then still do the lighting on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, we can play. We'll, we'll, we will um, work with it. Yeah. And we're not worried about that obscuring any historic detail. Any other uh, discussion items? Okay, oh, yeah. so then. Oh, I'll just remind you that when they do mount the one, well, it doesn't matter so much. Well, it still matters. <laughs> up in the stair tower that it's mounted through the joints, not through the brick. Okay. Through the mortar joints. Yeah. So then we're going to actually move to postpone this hearing to the March 11th, 2021 Ann Arbor Historic District Commission meeting. Just for the signs. Just for the signs. We have, do I need a support on that? Oh. Support. Commissioner White. And so then that closes this. We don't, don't have a vote. We're postponing. You there you go. Wait, are we still voting no. on the window part though? So on the what? The window we portion? We did? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry right? we did that, that doesn't negate that, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't negate that. The windows are go. Moment of panic. <laughs> All right. So if. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so we'll move on. That's it. Wait, wait, we need a vote on the postponement. Oh, sorry. Without objection. Without objection. Okay. Without objection. All those in favor, please say yes. <laughs> yes. 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 We're voting it. We're voting on the motion to postpone, right? Correct. Right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. This is turning into a disaster. Uh, all those, please say no. Okay, hearing none, do I, the motion, I don't, do I say the motion carries? That's correct. Yes. Okay, yes. motion carries. Uh, your application has been postponed. Sorry, I haven't had to do many postponements. This new territory. So now we'll move on. Thank to, you, Dave and Jennifer. I'm Kelly. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. So now we'll move on to F3, 306 Division, North Division. Ms. Thatcher, you please give the staff report. St. Andrew's Episcopal Church was built in phases. The nave in 1868 and 69, the chapel and rectory were added in 1879, and a tower in 1903. It is constructed of split boulders laid in courses in his English Gothic style. Uh, the site is in the east side of North Division between Catherine and Lawrence, and the applicant is seeking HTC approval to replace a monument sign in the front yard with a slightly larger monument sign. You can see the sign here in this photo. Um, the new sign is proposed to be located in pretty much the same place. This is just a view looking across North Division as we were walking up to the site. Another view. In the summer, it has a lovely flower garden around it. 
And here's a, an applicant photo of a um, better view of what it looks like right now. So right now the sign is 47 inches tall and 48 inches wide at the base. The new sign is proposed to be 72 inches wide and 54 inches tall. So a little bit taller, um, a couple feet wider. Um, the top is polished granite. There's a limestone band in the center and there's stone uh, for the base and the, the limestone and the stone match the wall uh, that are nearby, that wall. So it'll be basically a piece emulating that wall with some polished marble on the top with the signage. Location of the sign is appropriate. It's off of, it's in the front yard, but it's set back plenty far, um, meets all the sign regulations. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward application. Secretary of Interior Standard 2 I've already read to you tonight and 9 I've already read to you tonight. From the guidelines for building site, it's recommended to retain the historic relationship between buildings, landscape features, and open space. This shouldn't um, impact that at all. For signs, it's appropriate to install signage that is subordinate to the overall building composition. It's not appropriate to install signs that are too large or that are made from a material that is incompatible. Um, I, I don't think that this is too large and I don't think that this is incompatible. Um, ground signs generally aren't acceptable in commercial or residential settings, um, but this is appropriate because the church is uh, almost like a campus because it takes up the whole block um, and its design and materials are complementary to the church and the property and the surrounding neighborhood and staff believes that um, it is appropriate and meets the standards and guidelines. That's all. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, Commissioner Tejano and Beeson were on the review committee. Can you please give us your report and recommendation? Sure. Go ahead, Jessica. Um, I think, you know, being on the site here on foot, uh, usually I'm driving past it, but being on foot, uh, you get a sense of scale of the building. Um, and, and then you find that sign and it feels kind of out of proportion right now. Um, and I, um, I think the proposed one would be um, not overwhelmingly increased in size, but I think will be much more in proportion with the, the building that it's identifying and looking at the drawings, uh, confirming that, you know, it, it's set back from the, from the corner streets are being maintained. So I, I think um, this would be an appropriate uh, change here. And then for me, uh, you know, it's always fun to do site visits in the middle of February. Um, so <laughs> Uh, this, you know, this one was was pretty quick for us. Um, it was pretty straightforward to be able to see the size and relationship of the sign and um, its visibility from all various angles that we were out and about on. So, um, the matching it and the uh, materials of the structure would certainly be appropriate, and um, increasing the size uh, based on the campus location and its its location to pretty much everything else. Uh, its proximity to the roads and its proximity to the buildings all speak to uh, working out pretty well. Thank you, Mr. Spihano and Beeson. Uh, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. Hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Do you have any questions for me? The replacement sign, if you all have gone by St. Andrews, you will see that that metal sign that is currently there. It's amazing to me that you all approved it in the first place. And secondly, it's rusting and it is not correct. The newer sign will be in keeping with the structure of the building and um, is historically appropriate and will last forever. 
unless a tornado comes and picks it up and blows it away. So. Would you mind just saying your name and address for the record so we have an official record of who's speaking? Thank you. Absolutely. My name is Kathy McPherson. I'm the parish administrator at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. My home address is 8911 Giovanni Court in Heartland, Michigan. Great. Thank you so much. Do commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant? I'm not seeing any. So we'll move oh, on. Oh, the, actually. Oh, just, sorry, Commissioner Kihana. Wait, me. Uh, just dawned on me. So I'm looking through the drawings for the proposed sign. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the, like the, the face of the sign that has the name on it. Um, there th looks like three sheets that have that drawing and they're all labeled as front view. Um, is there a, would there be anything written on the back or? Is one of those actually a back view? It's um, not. It's just plain on one side. Okay. Sit so that it can be seen from both sides, uh, both Division and Catherine Street. Oh wait. So it it's on the property. So it, the name is on both sides. Yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Okay. So now we'll move on to open the public hearing. Uh, for this item. This is an opportunity for a person to speak for up to three minutes about this application at 306 North Division. Kristen, do we have any callers? No callers have indicated. Okay, callers. One last time, commissioners, do we have any additional questions? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing of this application. Uh, is there a commissioner that would like to make a motion? Commissioner Beeson. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 306 North Division Street, a contributing property in the Old Fourth Ward Historic District, to install a new monument sign as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design arrangement, texture material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area, and meets the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 29 two and nine, and the guidelines for building sites and the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs. Support. Okay, that was uh, moved by Commissioner Beeson and supported by Commissioner White. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Commissioner Rockland. I think the sign is incredibly compatible with the building and certainly meets our standards. Thank you. I definitely agree with that, Commissioner Rockland. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll uh, move to a vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries. Your application has been approved and you will receive written notice from staff. Please note that the uh, that you must apply for any required permits uh, from the city before beginning work on your project. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thanks. Yes, you too. Take care. Now move on to hearing F4 at 231 South State Street. Ms. Thatcher, would you please give the staff report? On South State Street is the Art Deco State Theater. I'm not going to go through the whole history since I just gave it to you guys last month, um, but work is ongoing here uh, for new tenants taking over the ground floor, uh, which is a condominium unit. Um, this application is to replace a non original storefront beneath the marquee and to install a new roof access ladder on the north elevation. This is the storefront that we're talking about. And the roof access ladder would be onto this, I guess it's a two-story roof. I think I called it a one-story roof in my staff report, but there's a, there will be a ladder over here on the side elevation that is proposed. Here it is again. Um, it's, it's right around in this area, I believe. 
would be where the ladder would be located. This is what you would see from the street. So the ladder would be visible from across the street or from right here at this corner of the building. We walk down the, the little alley walkway there that goes back through the parking structure. And um, right here is the area where the ladder would be located. Um, there are some uh, useful photographs in the packet that you can also reference from the applicants. Uh, here's what the ladder would look like. It it's, goes up, it's bolted to the wall. Um, I would have to check and see if it says if it uh, would be mounted into mortar joints. It does have a cage here on the top to get a person over the parapet there. Well, I don't know if you call that a cage or not, but it, it's got a return. Uh, since you have to go over the parapet wall and back down again. This is where it would be located. This was a platform for mechanical equipment. It is already gone. Moving on to the storefront doors. These probably look pretty familiar to a lot of you with the uh, Urban Outfitters rusted metal look. The proposal is to replace them with modern metal doors, same color, that dark bronze color. The transom uh, would align with the transoms on the other windows uh, units, which would remain on these three bays. These are uh, motion sensor doors that open automatically. The double doors move out from the center. Uh, and there's uh, detail on what they would look like. Um, really, it's, it's a little bit busier than the existing um, glass, which just has three panels and then a transom, but I think it's an improvement since it has a clear glass transom. The sign that was approved last month will fit uh, perfectly within this transom because it's the same size. Um, there's information, a lot of information on the doors in the packet. You're choosing the standard model and the color is this dark bronze that's complementary to the other non-original storefront windows. Um, from the Secretary of Interior standards, number one says that a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. I have read to you two and nine. Ten says that new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. From the guidelines for storefronts, it's recommended to design and construct a new storefront when the historic storefront is completely missing, which it is, maybe an accurate restoration or a new design compatible with the size scale material of the historic building. New design should be kept flush with the facade and as simple as possible. It's not recommended to introduce a new design that's incompatible in size, scale, material, and color. Um, for mechanical systems, it's recommended to install a completely new mechanical system. This isn't a new mechanical system, but it's a, a ladder needed for access to mechanical systems um, so that it causes the least alteration possible to the building's floor plan, the exterior elevations, and the least damage to the historic building material. For roofs, it's recommended to install mechanical and service equipment on the roof. Um, when required for new use, that they are inconspicuous from the public right-of-way and do not damage or obscure character-defining features. I have already read this to you um, earlier tonight. Oops. So let me go back up here to our drawings. All right. Um, the ladders needed because there are um, HVAC units, uh, RTU, rooftop unit. Um, they're currently accessed through a door that's in the second story, uh, second floor state theater. But since the building's now divided into up and down condos, um, for the downstairs tenant to get access to those RTUs, they would need 24-hour notice and owner supervision um, to use it, which isn't, um, isn't really useful in an emergency when you might need to get somebody up there to service those right away. Um, the, I, at first, I was kind of on the fence about this and thought, well, if there's access, there's access, and why do they need secondary access? But I do understand that there are times when the theater is dark and the first floor tenant will be open um, and it, it could be a problem and I'd, I'd rather not risk the building um, by not having the ladder there and not able to get emergency access to it. So staff believes that the work is appropriate on the condition that the ladder is mounted into mortar joints, not masonry units. 
It detracts minimally from the historic character of the building and is reversible. Thank you. Let's see, thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, Commissioners Beeson and Quijano are on the review committee. You please give us your report and recommendation. She's muted, so I'm gonna go. Uh, <laughs> basically, uh, you know, in terms of the storefront, you know, there's really not much change here. We're replacing like for like. Uh, there's some functional differences, and and I did have a question for um, Ms. Thatcher about whether or not there's a vestibule inside, or is it just wide open? Don't know. All right. Yeah, it just yeah, that'll create quite a wind tunnel, but that's not for us to worry about, huh? Mm -hmm. oh, um, there, there is a vestibule. There is. Oh, good. Yep. good. Okay. Um, and then, you know, being that the sign will be up there too, you know, it's, we've already approved the sign and it'll fit within the same band. So the storefront itself doesn't seem like an area that uh, will call, cause very much attention to it. Um, certainly the fact that it's being removed and replaced with something that's not as rustic looking, um, you know, we'll just see it as kind of a new material, but I, I don't think it'll detract at all from any of the historic character. And then in terms of the ladder, you know, the latter was one that we were definitely kind of scratching our heads about, about how easily it would be seen. So, you know, the elevation that Ms. Thatcher shared, that certainly doesn't do it uh, complete justice in the fact that, you know, we're, we're going to be down at the street. Uh, you might be able to see it standing at the intersection of State and Liberty, uh, looking over the two-story space um, and maybe get a glimpse of it. But by and large, I don't think you'll be able to see this very well. So those are my comments. Uh, yeah, similar uh, topics or comments. Uh, I'm happy to hear that there will be a vestibule because there is often just a lot of foot traffic in that area and being right at the opposite side of a crosswalk, well, people just linger there. So those doors would be going open and closed quite a bit. Um, but again, straight, pretty straightforward with the replacement of non-historic material there. Um, and I guess the only question that we had when we were on site really of the top portion of the, the ladder for a roof access is if there would have been like a, a true enclosure cage there, but looking at the drawings that were submitted, it seems pretty minimal, just the return and handlebars to get up and over that parapet. Um, it didn't look like the if I'm looking at what drawing is this? The elevation. Oh, this is, I don't know, I'm getting more into discussion here. Um, but it it seemed pretty minimal where it was located and the trees are there. So it, I think it would be obscured. Um, but I do have a question, so I don't know if I should wait. Yeah. After public comment, perhaps. Sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Commissioners Quijano and Beeson. Uh, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, provide your name and address for the record. Looks like we have a lot of people joining us here. Jody, Jay, or Heather, are you there? Jay, Hello. Hey, Jay. How are you? Good. Could you state your name and address for the record? My name is Jay. I'm with Lovell Contractors, representing the general contractor for the white box portion of the project. Um, the latter uh, address, uh, home address, 109 West Vernal, Stockbridge, Michigan. Uh, the latter itself does not have a cage at the top. That is return. Um, there will be a guard at the bottom so that nobody can climb up the ladder and access the roof. Um, it's merely because we cannot access that roof without prior notice um, of going through the theater um, to access the roof and the rooftop equipment that is on that roof. And it, it, it doesn't behoove us to have a 40 foot uh, ladder against the building um you know with danger to the technicians to access that roof otherwise okay 
Okay, thank you. And any other callers um, I like to identify themselves as part of the uh, the group here representing this application. Yes, I'm seeing none. So, uh, commissioners, do we have any further questions for the applicant? Uh, just a probably a minor Piano. point. Thank you. Um, on the the west elevation of the, the basically the main facade of the building, it shows the side view of the stair and then the return going over the parapet. Um, just wondering if it's not dimensioned though. So I think it's page twelve, Jill, of the pre of the packet. I was just curious how, you know, how far is that going to be? Which view did you want, Jeff? Uh, as the far as next far as one. Well, I, I guess we we could use this as mm -hmm. reference because uh, so we see that there's four you know forty two inches above the parapet. Yep. Um, but then which the a, other direction guardrail guardrail height. Yep. No, that that makes sense. Um, but then the kind of the horizontal direction. Uh, so that'll 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 be based on the thickness of the parapet, which is approximately twelve inches, um, okay, plus yep. the offset of seven inches on each side. Okay, so, so you are holding to that just the minimum. Yes. Yeah. You know, okay. It'll be seven inches on each side plus the thickness of the parapet. All right. So that's yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? For the applicant, Commissioner Beeson. Sure. So, uh, I guess a follow up for, with Jay. So, you know, we had noted that we want to make sure that there's fasteners through the mortar joints. Are yeah. the fasteners bigger than the width of the width of the mortar? No, joint? they're half inch. Um, they will be probably a, a Hilti product that'll go directly into the mortar joints. So, I don't know, Jill, if these mortar joints are three eighths or do we know? It is that same brick. I don't know if we have a picture over there. It's probably a three eight joint. I don't know if you've got photos. And then, um, oh yeah, there's sort of, so that might be a three eight joint. Yeah, honestly, I didn't measure them, I'm not sure. Yeah, so does Hilti make a, a smaller fastener that would still work with the ladder attachment or would you, you have to do more attachments it, i mean it's it's a lateral pull it, there's not a, a um vertical a pole. sheer load on it so much um because it's just a person um yeah and i could I, be wrong maybe it is three eighths i thought it was half inch i don't know if it's on the spec or not yeah but we could spec three eighths yeah most joints on the field are typically a three eight so sure you know, I think we'd we'd be okay if it meant more attachments so that you don't damage the brick. And okay. if you can get to a smaller fastener with increased numbers of uh, locations, that would okay. be ideal. Uh, yep. but damaging the brick is, an, is something that's really hard to replace and fix. Sure. And then I know Heather spoke earlier when I was uh, talking about the doors. So Evan, I don't know if you've got her on record. I don't, she's muted right now, but yeah, she's muted now, and I also see uh, Jody is raising her hand. Oh yeah, she is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so maybe would Heather or Jody identify themselves for the record? Hi, this is Heather Sexton with Target. Okay, and Jody, you're raising your hand. I'm seeing. Jody's probably via phone right now. Yeah, audio may not be working. Audio might not be working with Jody. Uh, I, maybe that's Jody Mendelson. Does that sound right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any other uh, commissioners or questions for the applicant? Commissioner Rockman. Hi. Uh, so the the first the first thing i thought of um obviously uh well maybe not obviously sorry the first thing i thought of was uh 
that this is going to be uh, great for everyone with a spray paint can uh, on State Street who wants to spray the State Theater. I just uh, was immediately concerned about graffiti on this building because yeah. of the um, because of the ladder. And then I'm reading more, and I and I, I see that there's a uh, there's doors leading into the State Theater. So obviously security is also an issue, not just graffiti. So can you explain more about how you're going to keep um, bad actors off of the ladder uh, who would like to get up on the roof? So that portion of the alley is fenced in, security fence, uh, has a six foot tall security fence, I, I know. Um, but the ladder itself will have a four foot security door on it. Um, at the lower portion so that people cannot get up it. Again, people get on these roofs from adjacent buildings all around the city. Yeah. And having a ladder doesn't necessarily say that they're gonna not get on the roof uh, because they've gotten on the roof in the past, so. Yeah, I think the photo that we have of that portion of the building it is already uh, has graffiti on it. Um, sure. Even though it's behind that security door, um, so. Yeah, I, I, I guess anything you can do to, to, um, to, to help that um, would definitely be appreciated. I don't know if a four right. inch or four foot. Um, well, it's, it's eight foot off the ground where this door will be located. So you have to actually get up to it. And then that's what makes it inaccessible is to get over that door at that point. Yeah. I mean, if you have a ladder, these people that get on these roofs are jumping roof to roof and they're they're hanging from trellises they're going to do whatever they can to to tag a building okay all right any other questions for the applicant i'm not seeing any so i'm going to open up the public hearing portion of this uh for this item this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the application. Oh, that's the right address. Uh, at 231 South State Street. Kristen, do we have any callers? No callers have indicated. Okay, no callers. Thank you. I will, unless we have any other further questions, I'm checking, I'm seeing none. Uh, I will now close the public hearing portion of this application. Do we have a commissioner that would like to make a motion? Commissioner Rockland had his hand up first. Okay. Um, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 231 South State Street, a contributing property in the State Street Historic District to replace a non-original storefront beneath the marquee and install a new roof access ladder on the north elevation on the condition that the ladder is mounted into mortar joints, not masonry units. As conditioned, the work is compatible in exterior design arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilita rehabilitating historic buildings and particularly standards one, two, nine, and 10 and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Now I said signs in there, is that what I was supposed to say? Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs? Yeah, so what was I supposed to say? Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines and just scratch the signs part or is it for something? Storefronts, for storefronts. Yeah. yeah, so instead of signs, uh, let's do guidelines for storefronts. Thank you. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Rockman and uh, supported by Commissioner White. Do we have any discussion on this motion? Commissioner Rockman. Well, should we talk about the, the doors first, um, maybe the storefront part? 
Great. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that. And I think that it, uh, it certainly um, meets our standards. And um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I couldn't agree more. Uh, let's see, any other discussion on the storefront? Seeing none, I'm seeing shaking, shaking heads here. So we discuss the ladder. Next, any discussion on the ladder? Commissioner Rockland. Sure, I, I I still think that, so okay, so let's say that graffiti is an issue. I mean, I think that um, this is something that certainly will impact the historic nature of the building. Um, is it removable? I think that it probably can be, especially if they've treated the brick a certain way, which I don't know if, if anyone who knows the building really well knows if the building itself has been treated, like pre-treated um, for graffiti. That would be interesting to know. Um, I don't think we have anyone here from the building though. Yeah, I don't so, know if that was part of the restoration effort. Right, or, maybe or it was. Previous time they do that, yeah. Um, but anyway, I guess this is something that it's it's up to the owner in this case, even if I think it's their choice, they're weighing um, you know, whether or not to put this ladder on. They know the risks of graffiti anyway. Um, so, uh, and, and Jay makes a good point that if someone really wants to get up there, they probably would have done that anyway. Now, if the ladder makes it easier, then then maybe um, I guess we we might wait and see. It, I, now that I'm thinking about it, though, I did have a question: Is the ladder a code requirement, or is it a really no, like I want to have this because of uh, risk mitigation? Does does anyone know that from the project? So. <clears throat> Currently, with the way that the building is um, split into two spaces, we if there's an emergency and the owner doesn't contact the state theater, we're in, indeed trespassing on their property to get to the rooftop units and or uh, the condensers that are on that roof and the roof membrane itself. Um, so the contributing factor to this is, do we trespass to save the building or do we have the access and the ability to uh, be able to service that and gain access to that roof in a, in a manner that's safe to the technicians and um, to not upset the, the condo facility upstairs, the tenant. Okay, so what I heard is it's not necessarily a, uh, a building code requirement, but it's a, um, it's a requirement from the, from the building tenant um, really for, uh, yeah, really something first. that they need for risk mitigation yeah yeah exactly okay um i i have no more comment on that then okay thank you commissioner rockland uh any other discussion on the ladder and I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't know. I, I don't know the variety of ladder options out there. I understand the the desire to have it, and um, it, that makes sense. Yeah, if there's an emergency, you want to be able to act upon it quickly. Um, is is there a safe and secure option for ladders that isn't fixed to the building? I don't know. Has that been considered? Uh, Due to the height, that's that's the that's the problem. <clears throat> if it were twenty four feet, twenty five feet, you know, that's a standard ladder height for a technician or a roofer. Mm -hmm. We're we're almost forty feet, and when you get to that, it's a non standard ladder. It's not safe. It requires harnesses. It requires multiple people. <clears throat> At that point, they'll you know, most companies want a lift, mm -hmm. and you can't even get a lift in that alley because of the way it's configured with the double doors and the fence in area with the the uh, fire escape yeah so that it, is a tight area it, yeah i mean it's the we we kicked around a lot of ideas on what to do and for safety as well of the technicians that go up there and that's that's the option we came up with okay uh, I, I will add um i'm not a, a ladder expert but we've we've had to install them in other you know projects um at our firm and 
this one actually scaled back. A lot of them have cages, so it make it seem much more um, obtrusive, much larger, or there's an extended platform. So I think this one, as far as ladders, scaled back in, in those terms. So I, I appreciate that. I, it is visible, but I think, again, it's a minimal solution for um, a risk mitigation factor that they, they have to, that they really feel like they need to do. Um, there are other fire escapes on the, on this facade. So I think it's, you know, and you, you probably don't see those as much. So those are potentially additional access points for maybe um, graffiti, but I think that's the point has been made that if somebody's going to get up there, they're going to get up there. Um, I appreciate that there's a, you know, a mitigation factor for somebody actually accessing for, you know, I guess bad actors as, Commissioner Rockland put it, but also a safety feature, you know, that, that's required. So I think it's pretty much within, I think it falls within the guidelines. Yeah. I appreciate the feedback on that. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It is a pretty minimal, visually minimal ladder, which I appreciate. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion items on the ladder? I just appreciate Jay just being so dialed in terms of, you know, being educated about the mortar joints and the, and being aware of that. You know, that doesn't always happen. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. I've worked in Ann Arbor for 25 years. I'm, I'm passionate about the buildings downtown and, yeah. um, you know, keeping with the history of, and yeah. So, I mean, we understand the impact on the building. We wish we could put it on a different elevation, uh, but this building, all elevations are constricted. We have nowhere else to put it other than that location. Um, so minimal impact on the building is what we're looking for. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other commissioners? So uh, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Your motion carries. Your application has been approved. You will receive a written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thank, right, you, thank you, Jay and Heather and Jody. Thank you for your time. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so now we'll move to... Evan. Yes. Could we pause a moment? And could you check and see if there's anyone waiting for a public hearing for 419 North Ingalls? Let's talk to Kristen here. Kristen, do we have anyone uh, in the queue? Maybe you should announce it so that they know it's there. All right, yes, okay. Yes. We'll now move to hearing F5, which has been postponed from the agenda, but is there any, any callers here who'd like to speak on F5 419 North Ingalls Street? Please raise your hand with star nine if you're in the queue. Kristen, you yeah. can just let you can just let Scott into the meeting if you want, because he's for okay. the next application too. Okay. There's one other caller. They have not raised their hand. Okay. Okay. So, Ms. Thatcher, are we okay to move on to F six? Well, we we had Scott. Oh, there he is. Scott had raised his hands. He was the petitioner for this application that was withdrawn and the next one. Okay. But he raised his hand just now, so let's see if he has anything to say about this one. All right, let's check in with Scott. Scott, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I just I just didn't realize I I don't do the Zoom meetings very often, so I didn't know if I was on or not. And she kept asking for 419. So <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So nothing to add. That. And we're withdrawing that one, the 419. <laughs> okay. So now we'll move on to, to F6, which is at 903 East Huron Street. Ms. Thatcher, would you please give the staff report? Yes. Let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. This is 903 East Huron in the Old Fourth Ward Historic District. This is a really cool historic house. Uh, it's a two-story brick Greek revival 
that was built in 1858 by Harvey Bannister, a mason, as a boarding house for University of Michigan students. Um, it features a front gabled roof with cedar shingles. Well, actually, it used to have cedar shingles. The HTC approved their replacement a few years ago. Um, cornice returns, double hung windows, a half front porch with fluted Doric columns, and a Greek revival style doorway with side lights and a transom. Um, that roof, that cedar shake roof was replacement was approved by the HTC in 2012. The site is at the northeast corner of East Huron and North Ingalls streets. And the applicant is seeking HTC approval to enlarge two basement windows and install egress windows and timber wells on the east and west elevations of the house. All right, so this is the front of the house facing East Huron. Um, one of the windows that we're going to talk about lines up with this window right on the side of the house near the front. And the other one is next to this gas meter just uh, behind the chimney, between the door and the chimney here, underneath this window. I think they're aligned. Nice thing about Greek Revival houses is that everything lines up. Um, I'm not sure when this entry was put in. It's, it's clearly old, but not original. So um, it's, it's, it's interesting in itself. You'll notice that there are three cars parked in the front yard here. That's a problem um, that I promised you in the staff report we would follow up with the zoning uh, administrator on. Um, there's gravel underneath these cars. You can see it here under the tires. That needs to be pulled up and there needs to be some sort of a curb or a fence or something installed uh, over here along the driveway to keep cars from parking there. But Nevertheless, uh, that's something that we're working on through zoning and you don't have to bother yourselves with it today. If we can't resolve it through zoning, it'll come back to you guys in the future. Uh, so this is this is North Ingalls here. Here's the sidewalk along North Ingalls. So this is this is also a front yard, which is why the cars can't park there. Um, and uh, again, this is the window on the east elevation of the house, very close to the front corner. Also very visible. It's on the side, but it's right at the front. Um, both windows look pretty much the same. Three lights. They're they're kind of sunken. The grade has has risen around these windows over the you know 150 years that 170 years uh, that this house has been here. Um, but we see that sometimes. So here's one of the new area wells. You can see it. The one near the front of the house near the front of the house. And this is the one on the front uh, facing North Ingalls. Um, elevation drawings, no change with the front or the rear. This is the, let's see, this is the far side. This is the east side showing where the new area well would be. It's proposed to um, not enlarge the width of the window, but only the depth of it to cut down farther. Um, and the window well would be timbered, wood timbers. And this is the west elevation of the house with the new area well and egress window there um, next to the chimney. From the floor plans, um, you can see that it doesn't show here which, window, which uh, walls are being added. I don't know if this space is currently finished or not. Um, but it does show a study, and that's why it would need an area well near the front of the house, and um, a bedroom, the sixth bedroom that's being added. It's a four-bedroom apartment upstairs, and a bedroom is being added here. Number six, number five is probably upstairs somewhere as well. Here's the other well that's facing North Ingle Street. Um, there are more photographs that the applicant provided, which are much appreciated. This is the well that's that's close to the chimney. It's got a gas meter next to it, which would not be allowed to be installed there today. Um, Anderson 400 series casement windows with or without these three little panes at the top to make it look more like a basement window um, are proposed. There is information on the window profiles. And the Secretary of Interior Standards number one says a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. 
Number two says, uh, I've already read to you number two a couple of times tonight. I've read to you number nine and number 10 as well. For Windows, it's recommended to design and install additional windows on rear or non-character defining elevations if required by the new use. Um, staff believes that both the front and the uh, both the east and the west elevations are definitely character dividing elevations. They have a lot of Greek revival characteristics. Um, they have a lot of originality to them. Not a whole lot has been um, replaced or muddled with. Um, not recommended is introducing a new design that's incompatible with the historic character of the building. Um, I don't believe that that window wells are compatible with uh, character defining elevations of the house unless they're completely hidden or, or behind something or um, otherwise not visible from the street or sidewalk. And both of these windows are very visible from the street and sidewalk. Also changing the number, location, size, or glazing pattern of windows through cutting new openings, blocking in windows and installing the placement sash, which does not fit the historic window opening, which this does not. Also not recommended is removing or radically changing windows, which are important in defining the historic character of the building, so that as a result, the character is diminished. Uh, and changing the historic appearance of windows through the use of inappropriate designs, materials, finishes, or colors, which noticeably change the sash, depth of reveal, and mutton configuration, the reflectivity and color of the glazing or the appearance of the frame. Also not recommended is installing new windows, including frame, sash, and mutton configuration that are incompatible with the building's historic appearance or obscure damage or destroy character defining features. From district or neighborhood setting, it's not recommended to introduce new construction into historic districts that is visually incompatible or that destroys historic relationships within the setting. Health and safety recommends identifying the historic building's character defining space, spaces, features, and finishes that code required work will not result in their damage or loss. And also complying with health and safety codes in such a manner that character defining spaces, features, and finishes are preserved. Not recommended is altering, damaging, or destroying character defining spaces, features, and finishes while making modifications to a building to comply with safety codes. From the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for Windows, it's appropriate to retain and maintain windows in good condition. Normal maintenance will include cleaning, sash card replacement, limited paint removal, recaulking where necessary, and new paint to make windows fully operable. It's not appropriate to change the number, location, and size or glazing pattern of windows by cutting new openings, blocking in, or installing replacement sash, which does not fit the historic opening. And for safety codes, it's not appropriate to alter, damage, or destroy character-defining spaces, features, and finishes. All right, let's go back up to our photos here. Uh, this is one of the oldest homes in the old fourth ward and uh, the city actually. It's currently a duplex rental certified for one one bedroom unit with two occupants and one four bedroom unit with six occupants maximum. It's currently for sale and the listing shows as contingent. Um, I already explained how a fifth and a sixth bedroom are proposed to be added. Um, the two windows, the wells would be pressure treated wood that's 40 inches wide, 38 inches from the house and 40 inches deep. Um, and the, the, the windows are Anderson 400 series vinyl clad wood casements. The top of the well would extend six inches above grade. Um, so this proposed egress window is very close, three feet to the front of the house and the historic front porch. This is an inappropriate location for an egress window since it is on a very prominent character defining elevation that's clearly visible from the city right of way. An egress window and well in this location are incompatible with the historic character of the house. Enlarging the window would be a visual disruption that would diminish the house's character. And the historic opening should not be replaced with a larger sash. This work does not meet the Secretary of Interior standards one, two, or nine. Um, on the other side of the house, these uh, are in a front yard facing, this window is proposed in a front yard facing North Ingle Street. It's an inappropriate location. For an egress window, since it's on a very prominent street facing character defining elevation, an egress window and well in this location are incompatible with the historic character of the house. Enlarging this window would be a radical change to a front elevation and a visual disruption that would diminish the house's character. The historic opening should not be replaced with a larger sash and the work does not meet the Secretary of Interior standards numbers one, two, or nine. Um, in some staff finds that the work does not meet the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation, the guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, or the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines. Thank you.
You're on mute, Evan. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, Commissioners Quijano and Beeson were on the review committee. Uh, could you give us your findings and recommendations? Sure. You want to go ahead, Jessica? Uh, sure. Um, I think staff's report was very thorough. Um, we we did spend a lot of time looking at both locations and discussing the fact that uh, because it benefit the the home benefits from being a prominent corner lot, uh, but it's also highly visible, and that those are two front yards, essentially, uh, primary elevations. Um, and the as we're walking around and looking at from different vantage points, those two area or basement windows, potentially area wells, would be highly visible. Um, and the the location gotta get my directions correct here the location on the uh not near where the cars are parked but the other side closer to huron near the front just around the corner from the front door um there is a driveway there um for i think the neighbor and it, you know we didn't measure it out but it it would be pretty close if the area well were uh located there i think pretty close to the the edge of the driveway um, just for reference visual reference if anyone has a question about that um, there's in that photo you can see there's kind of a low built up area with a, a hatch door i believe we didn't try to open it but that's for um i think mechanical access uh, access into the basement to not disrupt the ten any tenants in the building um and then there's this enclosure on the back kind of storage and i think there was a access point into the the house as well um there were some bikes and whatnot protected from the weather um but again here you can see you know it's very that window is very visible from the sidewalk um that's all i had All right, and then you know, by and large, um, you know, this building's pretty unique in and of itself. And I think what makes it difficult is its corner lot position, um, which makes it highly visible from um, the Ingle Street for sure. And then along here on, you know, the view that we have in the top left that's on our screen now, that is is definitely visible either from a car or a pedestrian uh, or anyone occupying the street. So. Um, all of these points kind of indicate that you know that we have window well applications towards a front of a building um which is you know not typically we something we try and see very much or want to see very much so um yeah that's it thank you commissioners quijano and beeson uh, Let's see, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. Uh, Scott Clausen, uh, 2100 South Main Street, Ann Arbor. Um, so I am the applicant for this house, and I know it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult location for us to work on, obviously, because it has two front yards. And there's only half of a basement in the house. There's only a basement under the front half of the house. So we don't have the option to put a window in the back, which is also only a very small portion. Um, the house is being used as it was intended to be used. It was built as a boarding house. It's still uh, housing, you know, it's in a high density area. Um, although we'll be with, be putting two window walls in and removing the two uh, basement windows. They're actually different. One of them is wood and the other one has metal, which is a metal frame, which seems that it was put in at different times. Um, the windows only come about eight inches above grade to the bottom of the brick that you see at the top of the window. 
So they're not, I don't feel that they're very visible. I mean, you're coming down here on street, um, it's a main artery through Ann Arbor. Um, and in order to get legal living space in the basement, I'd have to have at least one egress window to get um, people out to meet code. Um, so I, because most of the work is done below grade and not visible, um, I don't feel that, uh, that the changes damage the historic integrity of the property. Um, and also that window is probably about five feet back from the corner, which I don't think affects the visual, you know, visually to the front porch. So I guess that's it. If you have any questions for me. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Uh, <clears throat> do we have any uh, questions from commissioners? I looked, I saw Commissioner Quijano. Uh, so I was reading in the packet that the depth of the area wells approximately 40 inches deep. I, I didn't see it indicated on the drawing, so that's what I'm going with here. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, I believe if there's a vertical uh, elevation change of 30 inches or more, wouldn't there need to be a guardrail in place? Uh, no, that's not necessary. No. Um, at Is least that not a that, building code? No. I know. Well, I guess if it was on a walkway, maybe, or on a deck, if it was 30 inches, you would need a guardrail, but um, we weren't planning on doing a guardrail. I don't think you need one. We would be willing to put like plantings or something around it to help obscure it, but it only comes it really only come about six inches above grade. Well, I'm not, yeah, I'm not talking about the top of the uh, the timbers. I guess, I don't know, I'm not a code official, but um, it's, it seemed like. We, we have them at other locations and we, and they don't have guardrails around them. Of, of exceeding 30 inches. Correct, to meet code. We actually did one on 520 East Ann a few years back where we added a couple of windows to the, the basement and that was approved through historic, but obviously it's a little bit different location, still historic, but those are also probably at least 30 inches or over 30 inches deep and they don't have guardrails on them. Okay. I would just, my concern would be then that would be just another visual element. Um, but if that's not uh, a requirement, then we would not have to worry about that. But that's not in our purview necessarily. So. Any other commissioners with questions for the applicant? Um, uh, Mr. Epperson. Uh, can you just explain? I guess you said that only one egress would be required, but there are two proposed. Can you well explain that? Yeah, I, I, I guess I was asking for two because we wanted to have more light in the study area, but I really only need one down there for a bedroom, I guess, in order to use it as a bedroom. So, and that could be on either side. It could be one side or the other, it, it, it doesn't matter. I would just have to change the floor plan around. Any other questions? Not seeing any. So I'll open up the public hearing portion for this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the application at 903. East Huron. Kristen, hello, do we have any callers? No callers have indicated. Thank you, Kristen. Commissioners, do we have any additional questions? I'm not seeing any additional questions. So 
we'll move on. And is there a commissioner that would like to make the motion? Commissioner, I don't know, it was at the same time. I don't know. I'll take it. Uh, Dave, you're pointing that way, but that's Jill for me. <laughs> so I'm going to go with uh, that's, that's Scott. All right, so we're going to go with uh, Commissioner Epperson. Okay. Um, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 903 East Huron Street, a contributing property in the old Fourth Ward Historic District to install two new basement egress windows and enlarged openings as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines, especially those for windows and safety codes and the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings in particular standards one, two, nine, and 10, and the guidelines for windows, neighborhood setting, and health and safety. Support. That was moved by Commissioner Jefferson and then supported by Commissioner White. Uh, do we have discussion on the motion? I have one, yes. I'd like to, uh, part of that is that if they decide, if we decide to do that, and there's one, we would, would always have to meet the, The, excuse me, would always have to meet the, goodness gracious, the construction or the approval of the certification, I should say certification. That's all. Commissioner White, just to, to be clarify what you were saying, you're saying that it was that in regard to the uh, the guardrail that Commissioner Kihano was asking about? No, not the guardrail. Just no? just to to get the permit. Yes. Just meet the minimum requirements. We don't need a guardrail, and they only need one. And regardless, you know, if it meets our historical relationship that's a certificate of appropriateness yes okay so um do we have any other further discussion on that item i guess i would like to ask the two commissioners that were on site uh is one of the locations are they this equal in your eyes as standing there on site or is one subordinate to the other uh, these are both really tough um mostly because I'll, I'll start sorry um mostly because the secretary of interior's guidelines for real building historic buildings the guidelines for windows distinctly say recommended designing and installing windows uh installing additional windows on rear or other character defining elevations is uh, required by the new use so you know we we normally want these to be pushed back right and so right. on the elevation that's to the east you know that one's right up front it's just yeah. it's too far it's too far forward uh, then we go into the other side where we're like, okay, well, it is nicely pushed back, but this time it's on an elevation that's also just a character-defining street-facing elevation. So, you know, if like, if you had to pick one or the other, you know, like if I was forced to say, okay, pick one or the other, I would pick the one that was on the driveway side on the east side and mm -hmm. not the one facing the street, particularly if those cars were not parked there, um, mostly because that facade to me is the one that's seen the most and has the most character-defining features to it especially if the cars were not there. Yeah, I, I don't know. They're both really, in my mind, quite visible locations. I mean, you, you turn that corner on the, the Huron street facade. I mean, it's, to me, that's part of the composition of the balance. Greek revival, you know, it, 
those windows are all aligned. Um, so I think that's that's a feature. That's a character defining feature. Um, you know, I'm looking. I'm looking at the angles. I think that's angles. The longer side elevation, front yard. Um, trying to imagine those cars not there. I mean, we do have fencing and some hedges, uh, but I don't think it goes all all the way to the corner. You know, is that enough to conceal visibility of a of an area well? But it. But again, it's it's symmetrically composed about that chimney, um, and you know maybe there were two windows below where that those doors were. I don't know the speculation, but I it's hard for me to say yeah. to pick one. Yep. So. And I guess it's a tough question. I just it's this discussion. I'm just curious. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, and this elevation, you could also see that. Um, the brick chimney may even obscure that one a little bit mm -hmm. from some angles. Mm -hmm. If it's down low, you know, it'd be right next to that chimney place. But yeah. Yeah, but it, it just, it's, I guess it's, it's hard on both fronts because uh, we have to follow the guidelines, right? And in my mind, we have to follow the guidelines and the guidelines really are just like, <laughs> don't put it on the rear and other narrow and character defining parts, you know, and it's like, oh. Your comment made me think of something that we haven't talked about, but I don't know if there's something in the packet that would help inform this discussion. But so the, Jill, do we have a view of this window location, but where we can see the bot, the base of the chimney? Let's take a look. I'm just wondering the proximity. Oh, so, yeah, maybe that drawing. Yeah, it's that right it? up against it. It's right there. So, I, do we even have space there? You'd be or, actually waiting next to the chimney. Yeah, would that compromise the? I don't know. Who knows what the foundation of that chimney? You know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I, I'm starting to wonder now how that would get detailed and does it compromise anything? It, and could I ask the commissioners that were there on site to comment on the uh, the chimney itself? Is it looks from the photos to be different brick, but mm -hmm. I'm not standing there. Could anyone comment on that? I cannot. Yeah, I agree. In the photos, it looks of a brighter orange tone. I don't know the. Yeah, it's definitely age a of it. brick. Yeah, but the building is just so old that the brick is really yeah. old anyway. Even the chimney is really old. I mean, you know, this is before 1900. So, yeah, the chimney could have been added in 1901. It would still be really exactly. It's included. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Does that concern anyone else on the commission? Yeah, it concerns me too, like the stability of that area and being able to put in, like we don't know how deep that footing is for the chimney. Mm -hmm. uh, we could be disturbing that chimney footing by putting in something like this too, which makes me lean again between like, between the two bad spots, it's still making me lean towards the east side if I had to pick one. But then again, you know, we don't have to pick one. Uh, the guidelines are pretty clear about like, you, you just can't have it in the front and you can't have it on a character finding feature. So I, yeah, I'm having a very hard time seeing tough. how this meets, you know, the, the, the staff report was very clear and I agree with it. So I, I don't see how either one meets it. Um, any other discussion on this item? Looking around here, Commissioner Rockland, please. Well, corner lots in historic districts mm. are very difficult. And this is a good example here. Um, and, and this is not just a corner lot. This is a you know, very prominent corner lot. And it's not just any property. This is you know, one of the oldest properties we have in the old fourth ward. Um, so it's really, um, I gotta say, it's like a little disheartening 
uh, to have this application at all, like to see the condition of those basement windows that are deteriorated, to see the cars parked in the front open space. I mean, I, I got to get past all of those things um, to just really think about what is being proposed here, but I am going to get past my dis dishearteningness. And um, I just think that um, the on a front elevation, uh, it's so clear in the in the standards that that we, I don't see how we could approve a an addition being a window well addition on a character defining front um, elevation. Uh, it seems against the standards to me. Um, so I agree with the staff report there. And then um, the other piece that's being proposed, it, it is not far enough back from the street or obscured in any way. It, I get it, like if you look in elevation, it's just this little blip. But if you're standing there on the sidewalk, you see a big hole in the ground and it's gonna detract from the character defining features of the house. It just, it seems, it seems uh, plain to me that a window well there will detract from the character defining features. So I'm, I'm leaning towards not supporting either of the locations unless I hear some other discussion. Thank you, Commissioner Rockman. Uh, any other discussion on this item? I'm not seeing any. I would propose that we move to a vote. Everyone all right with that? Seeing yes. Okay. So all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. All those opposed, please say no. 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 The motion does not carry your application has been denied and you will receive written notice from staff. Scott, thank you for your time. Hey, okay, thank you. Okay. So now we move on to hearing F7, <clears throat> which is at 520 Detroit Street. Ms. Thatcher, would you please give us the staff report? Certainly. The single family residential home was approved by the HDC in 2010 and constructed shortly after that. It's on the southeast side of Detroit Street, north of East Kingsley and west of North Division. The applicant is seeking HDC approval to enclose a recessed second floor balcony by installing walls and windows to increase interior habitable space. Uh, this is the house from the front. This was, uh, this was a vacant lot until uh, this house was built on it in 2010. It uh, originally belonged to this property. And I don't believe that there was ever a house on the site unless it was a very, very, very long time ago. Um, you can see that it's a gable fronter, like its neighbors. Um, is a little bit taller, but you know, generally proportioned like them. If you look, uh, well, here's just another street frontage view. If you look through the neighbor's porch, this is the balcony that we're discussing. Uh, it'll make more sense once you see a floor plan. Do note though that, that this wall plane is inset a little bit from this railing plane. And the plan is to build up the wall at the railing plane up to the corner. And then there's a little bit of shed roof on the two sides that would uh, connect the existing roof to the built up wall. The green is the existing enclosed uh, uh, exterior uh, second floor balcony, not enclosed. This is what the second floor plan looks like right now. This is all balcony. Uh, there is a third floor. Uh, there are two skylights proposed on the roof here, which is why I believe the third floor and the roof plan were enclosed. Um, existing side elevation. 
you can see this is a this is a flat wall surface, but then this is all balcony recessed there and from the back. The house has lots of angles, which I'm sure will make this a slightly more challenging project since this rear is at this, this unusual angle. You can see where the two skylights are proposed to go to give light to the third floor, the attic. Those are totally hidden behind this cross gable. You, you may be able to see them if you look for them, but um, I'm not even sure of that. Here's where you can see the new little roof extension. It's a little shed that comes off the two sides. And this edge, this, this eave is, uh, is aligned with the wall surface of this cross gable. So you can see they're infilling it with large uh, glass windows, a couple of double hung windows on either side, pretty straightforward. All of the, the fancy banding and things will match the existing house. On the back, infilling it with a large and a small window, same thing, infilling the wall uh, to match the, the style of that band. And there are some helpful 3D illustrations of what it will look like. This really shows the, the, the roof extensions well. All right, Secretary of Interior Standard 9, I've already read to you. From the guidelines, it's not recommended to introduce new construction into historic districts that's visually incompatible or that destroys historic relationships within the setting. So really, all we're looking for is whether or not this work impacts the surrounding historic resources negatively. Um, really, I believe that it's, it's completely compatible with the existing house. It should have no effect whatsoever um, on the house next door um, and, and certainly not to houses behind, which weren't, aren't even in a historic district. But um, despite that, I really see this as a minimal change to this house. Uh, and I believe that it meets the standards and guidelines, um, particularly standard nine and the guidelines for district or neighborhood setting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, Commissioners uh, Quijano and Beeson were on the review committee. Would you please give us your report and recommendations? Um, yeah, you know, we, Phil and I walked, uh, you know, quite a bit up and down um, Detroit Street looking at various angles uh, where you could even get a glimpse of that portion of the house. It's, it's you know, on the rear half, if you will, of, of the property. Um, and, you know, I don't know if Jill, if you have that view looking from the street through the, the neighbor's porch, um, you know, that's probably the best view you have uh, of it. And even then it's a pretty minor view um, or limited view, I should say. Um, and I think I don't think that enclosing that space really changes the relationship between th this home and its neighbors. Um, so again, I think the views in, in the application depict it pretty well and staff's report was thorough and um, I have no other observation comments for, for this. Yeah, so this one would rely pretty heavily on the site observation reports. Um, and as Commissioner Keanu mentioned, she and Jill went separately from when I went. And, uh, you know, I, I would say generally the report is extremely thorough. What, what really is just that, you know, this would just generally change the massing relationship. Uh, and, you know, we've had massing relationship issues about these kind of overhead porches, mass above versus no mass below and vice versa. Um, and how that kind of affects what's going on next to the building and the relationship of those buildings. But, you know, I think this roof as it stands, the new roof that's there uh, would, would basically, it reads, it reads as a mass already. Uh, the way that the roof lines come across and the way that the, I guess uh, we'd call it a, well, it's a portion of the soffit where the, the wall is pushed down just a little bit over it. 
you know, so it, it reads as a mass that pretty much comes all the way down anyway. Um, so filling it in, I don't think will have any major effect on how the massing is read between the adjacent buildings, if that helps. Okay, thanks, uh, Commissioner Schihano and Be uh, Commissioner Beeson. Uh, would the applicants please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. I'm seeing three people join us here. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you guys for meeting with us. Um, my name is Chad Weiler. I'm with Forward Design Build out of Ann Arbor, and my des our designer here is below Miranda with Forward Design Build as well. And we're working with the homeowners, Ian Barry and y Ryan Weller, at the address and uh, yeah, the home I, I believe was approved by the HDC for new construction in 2010. Ryan and Ian built it shortly after that. And our intention here with the project is simply to enclose that second floor balcony for more interior usable heated space, simply matching all the details that the historic district committee has already approved. So all of the new construction and closing this existing second floor balcony is just that. We're matching all those details that are already there. So between the windows, the trim, the profiles, the massing, all of the intent is to match the existing details. Thank you, Chad. Uh, would um, Miranda and Ian just identify themselves and for the record, their name and address, please? Miranda, I think you might be on mute. Oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> um, Miranda Fry, um, 8714 Box Elder Lane in Dexter. Um, and I am also with Forward Design Build. Great. Uh, this is Ian Berry, I'm the homeowner at 520 Detroit Street. Thanks to all of you. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, any questions for the applicants here from the commissioners? I'm not seeing any. So we'll move on to the public portion of the hearing for this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the application at 520 Detroit Street. Uh, Kristen, you've joined us. Do we have any callers? No callers have indicated. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Now move on. Any again? Any questions for the applicants? Seeing none, we'll now close the public hearing portion of this application. Would a any commissioner like to make a motion on this application? Commissioner Quijano, quick to the draw there. Thank you. There was such a rush before. Um, all right. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 520 Detroit Street, a non-contributing property in the old fourth ward historic district to enclose a recessed rear balcony as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, materials, and relationship to the house and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standard nine and the guidelines for district or neighborhood setting. Support. That motion uh, was uh, by Commissioner Quijano and then supported by Commissioner White. Is there any discussion on the motion? Commissioner Rockman. I, uh, I agree with what's been said before. I'll just state that um, I think this is a very compatible change to this house. Um, I don't think you'll even be able to tell after it's done that it's like an addition or a change. It's just the way it's designed. It's, I guess this is what was stated by the designers. It's just gonna look like um, it was always there. And I believe that if it was always there that it would have been approved um, then as well by the historic district. So um, I think that uh, since it's a non-contributing structure, really compatibility is kind of the whole game here. And I think that it meets it. Agreed, Commissioner Rockland. Any other? Uh, Commissioner Beeson would like to chime in. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would. I would say very much the same thing. I mean, it's mostly the 
driving elementary um, kind of architectural features that are really pushing it. So I don't know if you've got any of the photos up here, but no, I don't think Jill does. But you know, just like that, I'll say it again, like the band at the top, the columns, how it all kind of just fills in. Um, you know, my biggest concern would just be for the homeowners and their thermal comfort on the floor, just because uh, that floor is not going to ever be have enough insulation to keep it warm enough. Um, so kind of managing that and it might therefore have to pull down some of the thickness uh, of that deck, um, which again, I don't think would really affect very much of how it, how it looks. Um, but, you know, it's sitting basically on a deck structure. And even if you just throw in some insulation underneath, it's not going to be nearly enough. And so how that thickness of that deck uh, has to increase to, to manage kind of the R value necessary to make it a warm space, um, I don't think would either affect the, the outcome here. Thank you, Commissioner Beeson. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll move to a, to a vote. Uh, let's see. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion carries. Your application has been approved. You will receive written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning on your project. Thank you for your time, uh, Ian and Chad and Miranda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So now we'll move <laughs> further down the agenda. Hey, Evan. Yes. Let's do another check-in for F8. Oh, yes. I had Thank told you, you before that we didn't need to, but we're going to do it because we've, oh, wait, our caller left. Never mind. Just just go through the formality. Just say that you're going to have a, If it, just, just ask for public comments on F8 anyway. Okay. We had, we had somebody on the line, but I think they were there for that last one. Okay. So... We'll now move on to agenda item F8, which has been with, with, withdrawn. Do we have any callers that would like to comment on agenda item F8? Kristen, I see you appeared. No callers. Okay, no callers. So then now we will move on to agenda item G, new business. And there is no new business. There is not. Okay. Mm. So we'll then move on to agenda item H, the minutes from January 14th, 2021 HDC meeting. I think you guys also have December 10, 2020. And then we also have December. Let's take a look. Did we have January? I thought we only saw one. Did I miss something? I don't actually know. I didn't print the whole thing out. Uh, I was looking on my phone <laughs> when it came through. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think you do. I don't see them okay. in here. Okay. Just December. Just December. Wait a second. Okay. I don't know if you have them or not. I'm sorry. December or January? January is not available online. Like okay. the agenda, it takes you to the website. There's no links. Link. Right. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I needed to hear. Thank you. Okay. But I'm good with December. Commissioner Quijano is good. Mm. All right. December. Commissioner White is good. Mr. Beeson, I'm seeing him. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm getting <laughs> thumbs up all over the board. All right. So we'll move on to agenda item I, reports from commissioners. Would any commissioner... Yeah, like, the minutes, like, is there something formal that you have to say, or can we just move on? I, I'm just curious. I don't remember. I, yeah, you can do without that objection. Without, without objection thing. Yeah. All right. Without objection. The December uh, HDC meeting minutes have been approved. Good. What was that? Good. Okay, good. <laughs> um, all right, so now we'll move on to I. 
reports from commissioners. Would any commissioner like to share something with the commission? Not seeing any. We'll move on to that. All right, no. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to uh, J1 assignments. Review committee will be on Friday, March 8th, 2021 at noon for the March 11th, 2021 regular meeting. Do you have any volunteers? I think it's Monday, March 8th. What did I say? Friday? Friday. Yep. I apologize. Uh, unless that is correct. I don't. Oh, well, no. it's Monday, March, March 8th. Right, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we're going to go Monday. Is it March 8th? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any volunteers? I cannot do that. Do we have any other? I'm seeing a lot of shaking heads here. This is not good. It's possible hybrid learning at Ann Arbor Public Schools will be yeah. starting soon. And then if <laughs> I oh. don't have the right last name, then maybe uh, they'll be away on Mondays and perhaps some future Monday I'll be able to help out. But March 8th is right. not going to happen. R is, is oh, Thursday, Friday, right? I know, yeah. Yes. Okay. I didn't realize that was the method they were. That's interesting. I didn't either. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I am, I am available. Well, Commissioner Beeson is available. You could see my enthusiasm. Yes, I can see it very clearly. <laughs> Perhaps it'll maybe. be warmer. Yeah, maybe it'll be warm. That's yeah. all I can hope for. Yeah. I think it'll be warmer then. Oh, it will be warmer, but let's hope not. Technically <laughs> speaking. Not <much. laughs> um, I am not available that okay. that day. I'm tentatively available so you can. Okay, so Commissioner Epperson is, uh, is a maybe. I will have to, yeah. Is a yes, so maybe we go with that for now. Ms. Right. Thatcher? Yes, thank you, John and Anna. Thanks, guys. Okay, yes, thank you very much. All John, right. we're going to give you the whole summer off, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's when John wants to do it, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to K1, reports from staff. The January 2021 uh, HTC activities report is attached. You don't have any questions for Ms. Thatcher. I'll pull that up. Job well done. Okay. Any highlights? Yeah, what are the highlights? Um, there's a bunch of gas meters. A lot of gas mm. meters. From the old west side. Um, yeah, that wasn't the most exciting month. No. Yeah, just two pages. Yeah, not yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't. Yeah, I wanted. To, I wasn't I sure if that that's was correct, right, but I. Still a well done. Yeah. You yeah it's only two a, gas meters. Is that correct? Yeah, you'll you'll have a flood <laughs> with the February <laughs> one. There are eight more that were okay. approved shortly after, including one belonging to. Our oh. chair, Mr. Hall. Here we go. Oh, it got approved. Thank goodness. Well done. Well done. All right. So we'll move on to mm. L concern. No. 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 K2. Uh, H2. Sorry, it was on the second page for me. I missed it there. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Ms. Thatcher, shall we discuss the annual retreat? Yeah, so the annual retreat last year was the last thing we did in person. That's correct. Yes. It was an interesting time. And uh, so I wanted to discuss with you guys what you want to do about this year's annual retreat. It's usually in March or April. Um, we're obviously not going to be able to do it in person in March or April. So we have options. We can postpone it and do it in the fall, which no one's ever really thrilled about. We can uh, do it over Zoom, which I kind of feel the same way about because it's usually like four hours long, or we can not have it this year, which is, you know, kind of a wasted opportunity. 
Yeah. So there's no good answer. So I thought I would get your input on this and see what you guys think about an annual retreat, or maybe you have a completely different idea that I haven't thought about. Mm. Well, what what is um, I, I certainly appreciate the the yearly review of photos and learning, mm -hmm. you know how everything looks. So I certainly don't want to miss that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I just I'm curious, like. I mean, that, that could be done pretty easily on Zoom. Yeah. But what else are we planning to do on the retreat? You know, what, what else do you have on the agenda? Well, and, and maybe we could talk about other, you know, splitting it up or something. If, if yeah. It's better to do it first. Normally at this meeting, I'd be asking you what you guys would like to discuss at the annual retreat. If there are areas that you feel deficient in or want to brush up on or things that are new um, or you know, any sort of educational opportunities, if I could bring somebody in to talk about a specific topic mm -hmm. of interest to the commission. Um, we haven't really identified things this year the way we usually do along the way, because I think that that's not something that was really on people's radar mm -hmm. in these, you know, virtual meetings. So I don't have a list like I do some years. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have brainstorms, you know, we can start from there and see if it's something that we should address right away or something that can wait. Or if you don't have any ideas at all, that's okay too. <laughs> Do you think that the projects that we approved have actually, like usually there's like a normal cycle of building, like you approve it and it's built. Mm -hmm. Do you have any yeah. idea from like permitting or whatever, like, have things been slowed way down where like we won't actually like you'll walk around to all the sites and nothing's going to be done or um, yes done? and no we didn't have as many big projects this year but we had a lot of little projects because of all the people stuck at home that wanted to mm -hmm. you know do sort of minor uh work on their house but w the, the commission did not review as many projects this year as in a, a typical year so no, there wouldn't, it wouldn't be as long a slideshow, but there would still be things to look at. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, you're right. It was impacted um, by everything going on in the world. Like mm -hmm. in, in past years, we've covered things like um, we've reviewed signs um, or uh, are there things like, um, egress windows that you want to revisit. Um, sometimes you're not sure about something uh, and want to sort of set new policies. So I can go out and take a bunch of pictures of examples, and then you can sort of use those to guide your policy making. Or we could do a review of the design guidelines, or we could write new design guidelines if you think we need them for anything. Um, Well, I mean, just to throw something out there, it, it seems like egress wells is something that we are going to just be seeing more and more of um, just because, especially like Old Fourth Ward and just, I think as property values rise, you, you know, and, and as rent rises, you look at that basement and, you know, the people that own these rental properties and single family uh, owners as well. It's like, there's, there's maybe going to be more basement projects. Um, I, and we don't have guidelines that's that are for egress wells, right? We have guidelines for windows. We have guidelines for additions. It's sort of like a teeny tiny addition mm -hmm. with a window change. Mm -hmm. So um, it would be nice. I mean, it's not very sexy. <laughs> But it's something that we see a lot of and yeah, yeah, we'll see. over and I mean, over again and we don't have a really solid guideline. Um, yeah. It might be nice to write a guideline for that. Yeah, I agree. And maybe we need one for gas meters too. Um, we have like a general one for mechanic, mm -hmm. you know, we have mechanical guidelines, but maybe we can get more specific with other little things that just, you know, they're just tiny, but we see a few of them a year or something and it might be worth the while to have the guideline for yeah, it might be good to update the 
PV installations too, especially as the Solarize program for the city ramps up. Yeah. Okay. Another thing we could do is, is we could just shorten the whole retreat. You know, there's nothing that says it has to be four hours. That's just what it usually is structured at. So we could have a two hour retreat. We could have a retreat after a meeting. We could have a retreat on Saturday morning. We could have a retreat on Thursday at two. Okay. I just feel like as long as there are donuts. <laughs> BYO. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Thatcher, uh, I do want to ask though, like it's a fair amount of work for you to go around and do all this, pull this together. Mm -hmm. And we're all dealing with different things in our lives that we normally probably aren't dealing with. You have children and so on. Is I don't want to put something on your plate if uh, it doesn't work for you to uh, um, do it. Right? If we, if we I, push it back a little bit, I guess. Yeah, no, I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be offering. Okay. If I, if I thought it was not doable. Yeah. Um, it's true that I'd rather not spend two weeks getting ready for the retreat. <laughs> But if I can spend two days getting ready for it, great. <laughs> okay. So let's do that then. Let's do that then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We right. keep it as an efficient retreat. All right. So when would you all like to do this? Um, would you like to stick to our traditional Saturday morning? Uh, would you like to do it on a weeknight? We just have to advertise it as a meeting and you know people can attend and stuff if they want to sometimes we get a strain right. um i feel like uh well this is me personally so the last i think the last two i've missed for one reason or another um so i'd like to be able to make sure i attend the next one and uh i'll bring my own food and um <laughs> the other part i was thinking about is like um my bike schedule is going to ramp up, of course. And that means it, it's different than just me personally biking as it's been in the past two years. It's me coaching. I'm coaching a biking team. I started doing that and that's ramping up a lot now. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when are you available, John? Yeah, that's the hard part. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the schedule just yet. So my point is that the sooner the better, like, okay. like once we hit April, things are going to get way too busy. Yeah. So, sooner in March, the better. March. And we do have a uh, spring break, which I know uh, like the last weekend in March. Yeah, that starts so the 29th August. of March. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure that that weekend, people may wanna get out of here. How about, how about early in March, like March 6th or March 13th or after the March 11 HTC meeting, though that's a little risky because this agenda got really long really quick tonight and it might happen again next month. Yeah. Yeah. March 6 or 13? Yeah, those. I'm fine with either of those. Those two look good. Yeah. I'm going to pass on it, uh, Jill. Okay. I'll catch you next year. Okay. <laughs> you know it's going to be over Zoom. Oh, oh on Zoom? Okay. Yeah. All right. You're going to mail the donuts to me? Well, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun now. Doesn't Washington Dairy deliver? They do. Oh, they do? Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Um, the demo right. donuts that I want, though. Oh, they're just down the road. <laughs> they're so decadent. <laughs> so I'm going to tentatively put this down as March 6th. Do you want to do it in the morning? Do you want to do it from like 10 to noon? Does that work okay? Earlier the better for me. A March 6, 10 to noon sounds excellent. All right. If anybody has any conflicts, I'll give you one week to come up with them. <laughs> March. So put it on March 6, we said. March yeah. 6. March 6 is a Saturday, that's correct. Yes. 10 to noon. Great. Okay. Um, and Probably what will happen is I'll just throw a bunch of stuff at you at that meeting, you know, to talk about and then at a we'll do follow up at a regular meeting later on to actually adopt any guidelines that you come up with. 
Is Coach Hall available? Yeah, it would. Is Saturday morning? Uh, I'm going to be in Minnesota, in Minnesota that day. I, I would say it's pretty unlikely I'm available for that, but that doesn't mean you guys shouldn't do it. Like, what about try to on the ice part of it. at that time, or are you? Uh, no, I'll probably be like. Can you zoom in? I, I might be able to zoom in for part of it or something. Like, so yeah, let's have it then. Don't worry about me. What about the thirteenth? Are you available on the? It's 13th? the same exact thing. Like, exact mm. thing. Okay. Yeah. Those it's are earlier cool. better if we do nine a.m. <laughs> no. no chance of getting you. We'll no, do it no, at seven. Just... Let's do it at seven no. for Evan. No, 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 no. I'm not. <laughs> At least it'll be daylight. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to be available for part of it. Okay. Okay. At least when we review your how your project, you should be there. Would that be on it? I don't. Oh. Maybe. Did you get it approved last year? I got it approved in nineteen. So this it's not going to be. It would have uh, been on last year's retreat. La last year, I think it was just pictures of plywood walls. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe just mm. framing. Yeah, that could have been, could have been. Yeah, it was probably probably with that. All right, so let's let's right. go with that. I'll try to do my best to attend at least part of it. Great, thank you. Yes. Are you gonna? Will there be a notice? Like, will you send something out saying that's yeah. when it's? Okay. Yep. Yep. Great. So okay. that covers that. So now we'll move on to L concerns. Are there any concerns from the commissioners? Yes, Mr. Rockland. Yes, well, oh. I have a concern about the gas meter project, not a specific concern, just a general concern. Um, I spoke with the project manager just because, uh, you know, I'm on the old west side there. And um, I just got sort of a, a feel that, that um, maybe he had a lot of open questions. Now, this was a few weeks ago. But he was, you know, working on a lot of projects and there was just some open questions coming to me that I was uh, fielding um, and not answering in any uh, mm. official <laughs> way whatsoever. But it just made me think like, wow, this gentleman has a lot of questions. And so I'm assuming that you've gotten a lot of questions too, uh, Jill. And I just would like to hear kind of what what sort of what are you hearing uh from this project and like are homeowners furious with you or are people happy and like you know just give us a kind of an overall status on what what you're having to to deal with on a day-to-day -day yeah. here yeah you know so uh probably four or six weeks ago when this started to really get going um i put on the front page of a2gov.org slash HTC, a little blurb about gas meters coming to the old west side and ended it with, if you have concerns about where DTE is proposing to put your meter, please call Jill Thatcher or email her. Um, I haven't heard from anybody. I haven't heard a single concern. I know that, um, uh, that DTE was supposed to meet with uh, city council members about this. Um, I think that would have taken place last week. I don't know for sure that it did, but it was supposed to. Um, but I was able to go over with one of the council members that there's nothing unusual about this process. This is the process that anybody who wants to put a mechanical unit on the outside of their house has to go through. Here's the steps. Here's the checklist. Um, and I, I think when you tell people that DTE has to do everything that everybody else has to do, they're pretty okay with it. So I, I would like to hear more from residents, especially about how DTE is doing, um, talking to them and explaining things to them. And I really hope they're not saying, you know, well, the HTC says we have to do this <laughs> because mm -hmm. really every house is different. And um, so far they've turned in 10 applications for staff approvals and they were excellent. They were some of the best applications I've had for mechanical unit um, staff approvals. They put up a little sign that says, you know, meter goes here and they tape it on the wall <laughs> and none of the the meters are being hung on the wall they're on a little short stem a little short post so they're next to the house but not attached to it which is great um and the the, the 10 that have come in so far have all been out of sight out of mind you know behind 
behind Evan's house or uh, on a side behind a chimney or they're there that whoever's filling those out has 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 got it you know they've they've listened and learned and are doing a great job that's great to hear there were one or two other ones though that I had to reject because they needed to come to the commission and they weren't able to get them on this month's agenda they couldn't get all the information in time mm. So, you know, it's a, it's going a little slower than I expected, but uh, it's going well so far. <laughs> I think DTE has uh, subcontracted the work. Um, I guess to Corby. Corby. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I know we, a few times. We had that initial presentation from DTE that was very thorough, and. They, they said there was going to be a bunch of steps with communication, like over communication, it sounded like to the homeowners in terms of, you know, hanging things on their doorknob and doing this and doing that. And I don't know, like, Evan, did you get all that stuff? No. Or did they just kind of show up one day and it was like, hey, today's meter day? Yeah, they just were there one day. I mean, they were, they were like doing our whole street at one yeah. time. So. Yeah, I didn't see any of that community, like, it sounded like several layers of, you know, mail oh, yeah. and door hanger and all this stuff. And I haven't yeah. seen any of yeah. that. And they, and they gave us that phone number when they presented to us, I wrote it down and I called it several times just, you know, to get more information about the project. I, I couldn't get through it. Mm. Did you try that Dave? I gave you that yeah. number. Yeah. I, I called the DT number two and it just kind of bounced you to like the general you yeah. ask line, yeah. right? It, you, you don't get anywhere calling their number set up for this project. So, but that's if you a little up, you got to call the the subcontractor. Yeah, number, and then you get some. Call him direct. Yeah, yeah. So does that mean that we need to yeah. update the website, maybe, or what would you like to see on the website? Well, is it is there a different phone number that's better? Oh, or? It doesn't have a DTE phone oh, number okay. on the city okay. website. It just has my phone number. Okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Safe uh, all right. Any other comments on on the gas? Thank you, guys. I'm going to give that feedback to them the next time I talk to them. That residents aren't necessarily being notified in advance, and that the phone number that they are giving out doesn't work. <laughs> All right, we'll now move on to M1 communications. I don't see any communications this morning. Nope. Okay, so then we'll move on to N, adjournment. I now adjourn the February 11th, 2021 HEC meeting for the city of Ann Arbor. Second.